three this time. I had a little hiccup last time with only two. I think the first half was good. The back half was a little weird. Anywho. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this episode of A Run Through. That's the rear view thing. So that's that's the other one. thing you do, yeah. That's the other thing that I do. Uh-huh. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this episode of It's Your Birthday, the only podcast that gets you a gift every single week, and this week is no different. And that gift, as always, is video games. From on high to our consoles to our PCs, video games have brought us joy in these trying times. I'm your host, Kelly Workman. I'm joined, as always, by Christian Langton. How you doing there, bud? You got a phone call, bud? Yeah, I'm calling. Uh, I'm calling CD Projekt Red right now. And, uh, Are you calling Nintendo? I'm calling. I'm calling my dad, who works at Nintendo, who also works double at CD Projekt Red because he's under crunch. Yeah, dude, he never sleeps. Yeah, he uh, he didn't answer, but unfortunately, I was trying to get get a hold of them because um, I got really panicked today, and I wanted to oh. complain to a customer service line because they posted. Oh. I don't. I don't mean to get into news right away, but do they posted this uh-huh. thing real quick? Uh, anytime you see a yellow screen posted by CD Projekt Red, you, you sh- just assume it's going to be happening. Yeah, you just yeah. get a little upset. You go, here we here we like, go. There's oh, another one. Fucking here we go. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, this is just them. Uh, I guess we'll talk about it real quick. Yeah, don't stream Cyberpunk next week uh, early, or they're gonna. They're going to bring down Well, yeah, because some, some guy did it already like a week out, didn't he? And yeah. And then got in some big heat. Yeah. Cause, duh. Because a disc fell off a truck somewhere and he streamed it on, on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, because he's a dumb fuck. I don't understand why anyone does that. Because it's easy to get caught. It's incredibly easy to get caught. Yeah. So Especially if you're like, oh, I don't know, the only one doing it. Yeah. Of course it is. Like it doesn't it's not even a it doesn't even make it doesn't even register as an idea that you should have. Yeah. Like it's I, so fucking dumb. Well, I mean like I guess they had to put out a warning cuz and and they're not the only company that's done this, but like, you know, Square's done it with Final Fantasy, but and Atlas did it with Persona. But they just don't want you to like stream important story bits like right before the game comes out. Well, I Alice guess. did it with Persona after its release too. It was like for yeah. the first like X amount of months you couldn't re- you couldn't show anything outside of certain parts of the game, which is crazy. After it's out there or whatever, but before release, I totally get it. But yeah. after it's gone, dude, that's up to you and and up to the person that doesn't want spoilers. I mean, they went looking, so you found them, and that's again on you. Uh, but yeah, beforehand is ridiculous. I can't, I don't understand that at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's cool. Cause I'm anticipating it. Uh, I kind of tricked have you he, earlier. Have, Cause I was like, yeah, they canceled, they announced they canceled it again today or delayed it again. Dude, my heart, my heart sank <laughs> for like a There's second. Nothing else worth playing. <laughs> no yeah. other games exist right now. No, that's not true. There's been some, I've had some good ones this week, but yeah, it was still like, I, 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 I can't, my heart can't take another one. We've yeah. had so many, and it's really the only. It's really been the only game this year that has been like. Nah, not maybe not the only game, but it's been like the. I mean, to say it's that most highly anticipated game of this year is an understatement. I think really, I can't think of yeah. anything else that's came out that's even remotely matched the the hype built around this, or really for the past probably ten years, five years maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I'm trying. What, 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 I, I'm trying to go into it with realistic expectations, but there's been oh, like, sh- yeah, yeah, there's been milestones for me as far as like important games that get me really excited. And, uh, I'd say like, this is up there with what, like Sonic adventure when I was a kid, uh, halo two, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. like games. I was like super hyped for <laughs> dude, that commercial yeah. for Sonic adventure. And you see him running away from that whale, dude, that shit was crazy in 3d. Like that shit was, no, wow. it is. It's, it's just when you, I, I totally understand. You didn't know where I was going now. It, yeah. But to go out of the gate with like, it's those Sonic milestone adventure. games, you know what I'm saying? Like cyberpunk 27, the grittiest back future, first person shooter RPG <laughs> you could think of. Sonic Adventure 2, right up there with it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I, I will hold on. Yeah. No, <laughs> no not, not uh, in time. In time. Like, dude, Kingdom Hearts 3 yeah. was kind of that. But I was already so fed up with that series by that point that it was just like, 
I could get disappointed by this and it wouldn't upset me. Uh, yeah. But other than like, yeah, like I said, like the games growing up, like Halo 2, Breath of the Wild, like Breath of the Wild is probably the biggest game that's come out in the last few years that got me extremely hyped. But I always See, try I was to have manageable on that one until I until I actually played it, and then I was like, "Oh, this is really good." But it, but at first, looking at it, I was like, ah, I don't, "You know, I don't know." Uh, I it just, it, not that I think it's one of those things where like we've we've been so uh, watered down with open world games, uh, which is yeah. kind of what we talked about last week with Ubisoft. That it's like I'm like I'm excited for Nintendo to take a shot at it, but at the same time, I was like, I, I'm teetering my expectations a little bit here. Um, yeah, now and honestly, that game outside of like some of the combat stuff, I really liked it. Cause at first, initially seeing it, I thought, oh, it's gonna be kind of like Monster Hunter, where every weapon sort of has like a different attack pattern and like all this other stuff. And then it was more like, oh, you can swing it like eight times and then it breaks and you get a new one. And I'm like, ah, well, that's kind of a letdown. But <laughs> yeah. other than that, like the the game itself, I really liked. Um, yeah, I would say Monster Hunter World, especially that was probably mine for the last couple of years. That was mm-hmm. one where I was finally like, oh, people are going to get it now. Thank God they're going to understand this yeah. game. Uh, and, and just the general hype of like, oh, fuck, I can finally play this on a computer and not on a goddamn 3DS. I can't wait like to play with an actual controller with graphics. Because, <laughs> I mean... The thing is, is they've always had like a like for what they're playing it on, really exceptional graphics. But I was like, man, if they could actually get to be able to use the horsepower of something that's not a handheld, I'd love to see what they do. And clearly, they you know knocked and it out. So it's like their biggest selling game of all time, apparently. So they yeah, did, they did was, something uh, right. Amazing to see. Uh, I'm trying to. I guess Fantasy Star, the first one, that was kind of one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fantasy Star and World of Warcraft sort of were two that I was kind of like in that wheelhouse with i had a uh uh, i I remember like i had like a demo or something of fantasy star for the dreamcast uh but it wasn't until a friend of mine got uh got the xbox version that i like actually played it and i actually really dug that first fantasy star game like quite a lot yeah we, um, I played a little bit on the Dreamcast, but it was the GameCube version that uh, I played the most of because that one had uh, that one. Well, that one had you, you could get an Ethernet adapter, which was for whatever reason always really hard to come by for consoles. And uh, yes, my actually my uh, uh, one of my uh, friends ordered this from Japan and got it, and it was one of the coolest things to see. Um, I think at the time too, he only paid like 60 bucks for it. My friend Ryan, he, uh, but it, it was, it was buck wild and I really wanted one. It's, Uh, it's one of the most strange things. I mean, like they, they had the Xbox controllers with the little like thumb, like keypad. And those those work pretty well. Like those worked all right. I heard this was cool Uh, though. It's like fairly light and like you set it on your laps. Yeah, it really was. Well, because the other thing, too, is you could set it in your lap and sort of just have your hands down to the side on the controls, so it wasn't really, like, that weird. It was yeah. sort of like just a lap keyboard. Uh, and, again, you're, you know, you're playing it, like, on a couch or a beanbag or some shit, so it's just kind of always there. It was actually, honestly, really comfortable. Um, that thing was great. I, I wonder if he still has it. I'll have to ask him about that. I mean, yeah, it's a novelty. Uh, I, I, yeah, I doubt, when you said I doubt PSO on does. GameCube, I immediately think of this. Uh, yeah, I, d- I doubt he does, but if he d- if he does, I wonder if I could maybe buy it off of him. I've I'd always said I've always said if I see one of these out in the wild, I'm gonna pick one up. I'm just like first. Yeah, they're look. too they're too unique. Yeah, uh, it's it's one of the strangest thing. Yeah, so I'm I'm but. trying to keep my expectations reasonable. Like today at work, uh, you know, we have a PC gaming chat in our like Teams thing, and just me and a bunch of dudes like talking about games sweaty, and like getting sweaty getting sweaty and talking shit to each other about like how their favorite games suck ass and how i don't play any games that involve skill because i don't play fucking like right. arena shooters and battle royales uh yeah yeah i get so, that you don't i mean you are i mean it does make you weak but it's, I understand. It's, i'm a little weak for it yeah just a little bit so, i mean hey same but they <laughs> were like uh, i don't care for them really they were talking like uh like Oh, what if it comes out and it's like a super disappointment? Like they were trying to get like, cause I was talking about how hyped I was and I was like, yeah, it could, 
I mean, yeah, it absolutely could. Seven years yeah. and and all of this, it could definitely fall apart. And I was like flashing back a little bit because there's always those games that are like incredibly hyped and they come out and you always see like the YouTube compilations like in your recommended of like 10 minutes of people just like fucking looking at bugs and reacting to like how yeah. broken the yeah. game is. Uh, and I, I, th- I think it'll be yeah, smooth. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I think it'll be smooth. Especially if they weren't lying about the game, like, getting delayed well, because they were trying you, to make it better, or... Have you watched any of the press stuff so far? Because there's been, like, seven or eight outlets that have gotten to play, like, almost 20 hours of it. Have you watched any I of read, those? So I didn't watch any. I, I read PC Gamers right up. Um, I think it was, like, IGN or one, one of the other sites, like, Eurogamer, I think, that I read there right up on it. Yeah, um, I mean to to summarize, they're all almost identical, which is a good sign, I mm-hmm. guess. More or less, is that everyone's having basically the exact same experience, uh, and and pretty much the major criticisms are like, the menu system is not great, the the there is some graphical bugs, and it's a much slower burn than you would expect it to be, and that it is the shooting aspects of it are are solid there but probably the weakest point only because of how solid the interactions and the actual characters and everything else is Mm -hmm. and that you don't you won't run into combat the same way you would in other games like if if you're in the open world it's like you'll you'll be attacked or something almost every time you drive somewhere whereas here it's like you have to go you can have that happen only if you really want to go find it it's not like you're not going to be, you know, shot out at every mo. It's it's that thing that actually does annoy me in a lot of open world games where it's like you'll just be trying to finish a mission and then you get attacked by like, you know, a group of gang or whatever that somehow recognize you immediately in your different vehicle somehow. And, you know, it's just like there yeah. he is. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck, here we go again, uh, which can obviously open up for some pretty in- interesting moments. But their main criticism there. The- and that- these weren't even criticisms. They were just like. It's not really the game that you think it's going to be as far as that stuff goes because all the stuff shows this like really fast-paced action game, which it definitely has that, but that it's a slower build than you would expect. They were saying, they were saying like somewhere in the seven to eight hour range to get a title card, which is like, you know, fine with me. Um, I, I kind of assumed that going in because you have the three different like starting paths that you can take. Uh, where it's yeah. like a street thug, like uh, Corpo and the Nomad. And I imagine like that whole storyline is what gets you to the point of like the, the real story playing yeah. out. Um, they said it sets everything up really, really well. And all the yeah. characters. Uh, again, this is all from other out- sources. But it's one of those things where if like, I don't know, 15 groups are all saying basically the same thing. It's like, okay, well, that's I, I got to at least take most of that to heart. Yeah, and I think that their, um, like, restriction on the previews uh, that they were playing was, like, a 15-hour, like, playtime or something that they were allotted. Yeah, it's, like, 16, I think, is what yeah. they what they ended up playing. But all of them said they all felt like they'd barely even started and that it was, like, they were ready for more of it. So, um, yeah, I, I like I said, I, I, uh, I think the <gasps> considerations they're making for this stuff uh, seem... Like, I also wouldn't want it to be, a, like, you know, I can only take no holds bar action for so many hours at a time anyway, so I really wouldn't want that out of a an RPG as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it seems, it seems, it, the, the other thing they were saying is just, like, the amount of, uh, like, options you have for, like, actually tackling any given situation once you start to really, like, e- uh, understand and utilize all the stuff that you're, like, the abilities you're given or the, like, hacking stuff and all those other things that you can actually do is, like, it really, it like, that, the combat really starts to come together. Um, so, yeah, I, I, like I said, my, obviously my expectations are higher than they probably should be. But I also feel like for an example too. the other thing is like the other studios we're comparing stuff to that gets like overhyped, like no man's sky. You're looking at like hello games, which is a super small studio with their track record before that being like 
a side scrolling dirt bike game mm-hmm. um like danger action whatever so it's like for them to to transition to this huge uh other experiences like you know a little too much on them i think um also being backed by sony's money and marketing and attitude or whatever probably didn't help and uh you know fallout 76 i would say is probably another one realistically Mm -hmm. which was that way i would say the hype was obviously a lot less for that one than most yeah, and, I feel uh, like uh, I feel like out of the as well a little bit, out but. of the gate, people were kind of against that game, uh, which yeah. is fine. But, yeah, but you also saw the sentiment like before Fallout seventy six came out, like of people like oh, a Fallout MMO or like a Fallout multiplayer experience would be pretty cool, and then it happens, and everybody's ready to hate it for some reason. It, it was it was kind of odd. Well, uh, it, it was really strange, and then it was like a lot of like people not even playing it because because having like since i have like a fallout tattoo anyway i would have people when i uh would work like talk to me about fallout fairly often and then that would always be the line and joke of like i oh, you played 76 and i was like yeah actually i i kind of like it and like i was like what about you and like oh, i ain't playing that shit and i was like oh so you don't know and like that would be yeah. like over and over again i would say out of the probably I would say around like eighty-ish people I talked to about it. I would I would say four have talked or played it, and then like outside of that, there was like another guy at a pet store that worked there that we met that was like super hyped about it. Like, he loved it, um, and so yeah. And then it was also a lot of the stuff around that like the uh, the issues they had with like their you know the helmet release and then the 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 nuka bottle the damn and all this bag. other shit. The t- in the, the bag and all that well, it w- that's the thing is all the articles around it weren't about the game itself like they were all about that shit so it's like it gave the game a bad impression even though they weren't talking about the game um now the game definitely had its issues and still totally does but uh yeah it's 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 coming around to some extent um but, yeah I, uh, I guess but, yeah. i'm just uh i'm ready for the review bomb in the in the like when the expectations aren't met, I'm ready for those point one scores on on Metacritic on the user section to start uh, popping up like, pretty high. Yeah, but that's a like trash heap too, though. Of people oh, of that course, just don't, of course, don't. You know, it'll be like two hours played or thirty minutes played. And like oh, I didn't fucking like this, and it's like you didn't even start it. Like, what do you mean you didn't like it? You didn't even get. It. You didn't even begin it. Yeah, of course you didn't. Um, and I'm sure people aren't because I mean again I think it's a little bit disingenuous from what I've heard from what they're showing with all the action shots and everything like that but you know you can't really show hard hitting dialogue in a trailer either to get people excited you sort of have to show that uh, sort of stuff so um, I definitely understand uh, that but I I feel like that is maybe going to be their detriment at least with the general populace maybe uh, or at least people that are not into into um, uh, RPGs as, as so much, but we'll see. It's right around the corner, so it's so who, who knows. I think you and I were talking about we're gonna do our normal episode next week, but we're also oh, right, uh, probably right. Friday gonna do uh, probably an hour long just impressions, or probably a little long, depending on how long we want to talk about it. Uh, and we, not be playing it. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, we're going to talk about it, release that. Um, and I'm sure we'll have more to say about it. But I, I do want to get through a good chunk of it and, and kind of talk about my yeah. experience of it, too. Especially um, if it comes out at 6 p.m. for us. I'm, I'm hoping I'll at least get 10 hours in that day. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I would, I would think Let's as hope. sad as that may sound. I feel like that's, that's going to be, I mean, my whole plan is that I've been, I've been waiting for it for a long time. So whatever, but so I'm off next Thursday and Friday. And my whole plan was like <clears throat> when I assumed it was coming out Thursday at like midnight that I was going to be like, yeah. okay, I'm going to get home. I'm going to drink a little nice glass of warm tea. I'm going to snuggle up in bed. I'm going to take a little four hour napper. And then wake up and have it. But now it's going to come out basically when I get home from work. So so that's it. None of that. None of that. No stops. All gas, yeah. no brakes. That's 
That's yeah. just what's going to happen. I, the only thing is, 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 like I said, I haven't heard anything about a preload, and I have to imagine they're going to do it. Dude, they have to. But They have to. I, you know, I would like to think, but I would also think we may have gotten some of that info before now, but I don't know. Uh, I, ho- I hope. That's a huge one if they don't do it. Yeah. Luckily, it doesn't seem like it's a huge download, though. Like, it's a big game, but it's definitely not like, you know, upwards of 100 plus that you would think. Speaking speaking of that, actually, I was looking at Red Dead Online because I was I was contemplating just getting the Steam version of the online part. Uh, 150 gigs on that bad boy right there. Ooh. So. Ooh. Uh, just for the online, that's not the story content or anything. So I don't even know what is there. Wait. Uh, that's. Hold on, because I have the game installed without the multiplayer. Yeah, and I think it sounds like the whole game. I think it's I think it's 215. Uh, if I remember right, That's I have to, I have to actually s- see where it's at. Yeah. It's pretty fucking insane. That is um, monstrous is what that is. Uh, yeah, games. I can't remember what drive I actually have it on, but 116 for the base too. For the base game, it's 116. Are we sure about this? I'm positive. I'm looking at it right now. That's, that's fucking Oh, here, crazy. yeah. Here's my folder. Hold on. Yeah, that's, oh, well, that that might just be, uh, well, no, I guess that would be, I was going to say that could be, um, no, it does say 116. Yeah. Then what the fuck is happening with the Steam version of the game? <laughs> that, <laughs> it's, it's, they, they packaged like a whole other game in it accidentally. That's what, you get Max Payne well, 3 for free when you sense. install it is what that sounds like to me. <laughs> oh, that's the most confusing thing though, because if you took out all of the, single player con- maybe they didn't maybe there's some deal in there to where if like you pay it's probably the call of duty method where it's like you have to download every asset because they're all tied to each other in some fashion yeah and then do this but uh like now we got you fork bananas. over and then you can play the rest yeah let me double check because this is also obviously it's one of those things where i was reading the the reviews not so much the actual page itself let me see what it says no it says 150 gig storage required so never mind yeah, maybe up to uh, like I I don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, pick that up for five bucks if you want. I mean, Red Dead Online's fine. Uh, I, you and I've played it a little bit. Uh, I've played a lot of it. Yeah, it's it, it's just the it's the server stuff. It's the hackers, man. It's really the biggest detriment to that game is they just don't, they don't they they let outlaws run free with things that are not in the game like it's not a yeah it, it you know it's it's just the having flaming horses and cages thrown at you when you log in you're like well this is fun like you I, you don't even a lot of times you don't even get to to do much and i would honestly imagine now it's probably tenfold now that it has a new influx of people coming in i'm sure it's even worse than it was before because now they're like oh people are back on this game time to fuck around some more so yeah, Rockstar's cool, like online cool security stuff. stuff is such a joke. It's such a fucking joke. It do, does it have any? I uh, no. I think they like fired that guy and then totally forgot about it like 15 yeah, years it, ago. It, it probably was one dude, and he still gets tweets about it every day, and he's losing his fucking mind. And he's like, <laughs> "I've already, I've been let go, dude. Please stop. I, I know don't they do don't do anymore. anything. I know they don't." <laughs> If I wasn't under NDA and I could tell you what my job actually was, you would be fucking angry, but I can't. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, oh, goodness. Let's get into yeah, it a so little not, bit. Yeah. Uh, so one of our only other news articles, uh, normally I wouldn't even mention this, but Nintendo Switch got a patch, which is like kind of a substantial one for some stuff. Uh, like they they move the Switch online stuff to the front screen, which is you're showing here. Uh, which is pretty neat. So it has like a trending page and then it, um, uh, it shows you like what your friends have been playing and stuff like that, which is kind of neat. Uh, and they've done um, a little bit of work with that uh, to kind of make it, a, uh, well, to actually show that they have like an online proponent to their system, I guess, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of cool. Put it like front um, and center even. <laughs> yeah. Cause otherwise it's kind of buried. So it's sort of nice. Uh, and then now you can actually get to the like special features that are offers thing, which I never even knew was a part of the system because it has never shown up to me. Uh, but it's mostly like you can download like an extra 
set of tickets or something for Smash Brothers and some other thing. It's nothing like major. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing I think that they have changed is now that you can send up to 10 screenshots and one video to the phone app from just the Switch, and you can uh, connect it via USB-C to a PC and access your screenshots and stuff now, um, which is which is cool because for whatever reason, it was a lot harder to do. You had to like actually take the SD card out, you know, get a reader, put it in, do all that. Um, what I would do is I would so just uh, I would just tweet photos and videos and save them. Like that's how I, I would did do that it. too. It just messes with the like the resolution and stuff. So mm-hmm. if you wanted like a full res one or whatever, you could you can do that now. Um, which is because I did the same thing when I was playing Animal Crossing a lot. That was the only way I could really get to them easily. Um, so it's cool that they're, you know, coming around into a direction of making things a little bit more, uh, accessible instead of just, uh, just, um, you know, walling off themselves for whatever weird reason. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. I will uh, say, I was to think uh, if there's any, uh, they did this trending thing. I think you briefly mentioned it. Yeah. You can see what your friends are playing and like how many hours they put yeah. into it. Like who's recently played that stuff. Uh, they did add more Mario icons is what they're showing now too. So you can, yeah, you can uh, so for the 35th shit. anniversary. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other big one is, uh, uh, automatically download backup saved game data, uh, was added to the save cloud. So, uh, using software with the same Nintendo account linked to multiple systems, save data backup from one console will automatically be downloaded to the other one. So in situations where you have a switch and a switch light, that should make things a lot more seamless, uh, which is cool. Cause I know quite a few families are, which I would also think is probably gearing people up for a new system itself. Um, cause if some people are going to be buying this rumored switch pro and whether or not it is actually portable or just docked to the TV, whichever, um, that makes that easier because then that either gives people the opportunity to make their old switch, you know, just their portable one and the new one, just their TV one and have all that be a lot more seamless. And I imagine this is probably like a, I mean, one, it helps with the light already, but again, makes it kind of, you know, more of a, a switch, a, a, a streamlined thing. Cause I imagine it, most homes that have a switch have more than one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems like um, it, whether it be, you know, regular size ones or lights or whatever, um, cause it's a pretty accessible system. So it makes sense and that everyone kind of get around with it. I remember like you picked up the light and, uh, cause you were like, yeah. Oh, when I'm playing on the light, I have to go into the menu and redownload the save. And I told you that day, I was like, well, that seems shitty. You're like, yeah, but you get used to it. And I ended up getting a light and yeah, you did get used to it, but it's still like, I would start yeah. games all the time and then hit continue and be like, oh, fuck, I did this like three hours ago. And I have to be like, fuck, let me go back and re-download yeah. it. It was annoying, especially when I would do it and then take it to work with me or something. So then I'd sit down to start before like my shift or something and go, ah, fuck, that's the old one. And then, uh, you know, whatever. It wasn't too bad because I primarily used that one. And then uh, my girlfriend used the, the, the TV one. So it wasn't really that big of a deal. Uh, on my end, it only happened like rarely. There was like a few things that I would want to play on there, but having now had a switch that goes to the TV at all times, it's pretty nice. Got to got to be honest, I'm kind of digging the uh, yeah the bigger thing. We've been playing quite a bit of stuff on there the last couple of days, so um, it's a good so, yeah. system, man. Yeah, the switch it, is great. It's cool. I want better frame rate, but it's cool. I want yeah, better yeah, yeah. I want better frame rate, but it's cool. Yeah. Um, um, oh, you can also now select what to be prioritized with downloads. That was another big thing they added. So if you're downloading like three things at once, you can go, I want this one first, um, which is again, a little late, but a good thing to finally have. Um, and I think that's the only other big thing, some stability stuff. And then they added uh, Brazilian uh, Portuguese language was added to the support language. So that was the only other thing, but that's Pretty the cool best. Patch. That's the biggest it uh, kind of neat stuff. That's honestly the biggest feature. I was like, worried that if I were oh, stuck in Brazil, yeah, like I just couldn't talk to anybody in my native you tongue. Have to kick rocks, dude, and yeah. just deal with it. Fuck off, Brazilian. learn a new language. Yeah, or you could, or while you're on vacation in another fucking country, you can maybe just I don't know vacation, my dude. That's right. That's right. Well, you don't always need to play Mario Party, Super Mario Party. You know what I mean? <sighs> it's my favorite game. 
I, I can't go, I can't go without Super Mario Party for the Nintendo I Switch it up family recently. of consoles. It's it's okay. It's, it's all right. It's it's better I've got than some the. I, well, we'll we'll talk about. It. I got some issues with it, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Uh, literally, yeah, this is the I, only I, other news story I brought in. Like this yeah, is the only I, thing uh, I saw. I I saw they were talking about this on Giant Bomb a little bit. I think. Yeah. And I think Ben Pack was mentioning this. Yeah. So. Uh, do you know what Slippy is by any chance? Like I do now. Uh, yeah, I didn't before, but I I knew I've I, uh, based on what they were talking about. I got some info on it because yeah, I had not heard of that. Yeah. Uh, well, for anybody out there who doesn't, Slippy is like a uh, it's a modified version of the netcode in Dolphin Emulator uh, that essentially adds rollback netcode to Smash Brothers. Uh, I think it's the only game that is supported right now. I think. Like, they've gotten, like, other Nintendo GameCube and, like, Wii Online to work with it, I think. Um, but primarily it's for Smash, because before it was all based on, like, frame timing and, and, and like, it wasn't delay-based. So, like, lag was very prevalent. It would stall. Like, input delays were terrible. Uh, but now it's somewhat playable. And so for the past, like, almost year, like... Uh, probably about six months. People have been doing a lot of like melee tournaments online. Uh, the big house is like a really well known in the community uh, fighting game tournament for Smash. Uh, and like, you know, they've they've had a lot of uh, what's the word? Uh, a good reputation for for putting on a good tournament, and like the tos are very good. Like everybody praises the the big house uh, for being a very good tournament. But uh, they were canceling the in person, so they did the online. They were gonna do ultimate and uh, melee through Slippy, and Nintendo said, "Nah, fuck that. Uh, you're not doing either <laughs> yeah, of those did. fucking things." Yeah, uh, they sure did, as they always do. Yeah. And, like, the big thing about, uh, like, this is their message. They basically just said, uh, Big House is heartbroken to share. We've re received a cease and desist from Nintendo of America, Inc. to cancel our upcoming online tournament. We are informed we do not have permission to host or broadcast the event, primarily due to the usage of Slippy. Sadly, all of our competitions are affected. We are forced to comply with the order and deal and cancel the Big House online for both Melee and Ultimate. Uh, refund information will be sent shortly. We apologize to all those who impacted because you know people put in for pools and stuff for sure this yeah. stuff. Um, and it honestly, so it's twofold, right? And, and they kind of mentioned this on Giant Bomb, but one, Nintendo has always been very weird about emulators. Their stance is that essentially the practice is like immoral, illegal, and immediately results in piracy. Uh, which to some yeah. degree they're not wrong, uh, but at the same time, like like emulating software to hardware is completely legal. First off, like you're just essentially reverse yeah. engineering something into a completely different platform. It's almost like a transformation. Is you're not basically like copying like the actual source code or anything. Like you're trying well, no, to no, and, and it goes down to you know, especially for the last several years, like. Those discs burn out eventually. Like they work for a long time, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, by scratching whatever, they eventually burn out. Uh, and that was a point that Ben brought up with this too. Is just like uh, I think these people have probably bought quite a few copies of Melee and Ultimate over the years. I think they've probably more than owned, you know, their copy of the game. More than likely, have probably bought Nintendo hardware specifically and almost exclusively to play these games. Yeah. So yeah. it's like pretty frustrating that that's the ones they hit with this stuff, which seems to be the case with Nintendo a lot is they seem to always fuck the super fans for whatever mm -hmm. reason. It's really weird, but they always are like, you guys really, really like our stuff. That sucks. You shouldn't. Here's why. And it's like, why do you guys do this to these like groups all the time? Um, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it's it's just super weird. It's I, I I don't get it. And maybe it's just Nintendo specifically their lawyers and not the company itself that's like, hey, don't do this. But um, you know, the other side of it is too is like if you're so upset about this, fucking make your own net code better. And like if you're gonna keep doing this, because yours kind of sucks all the time. Yeah, it's. 
And that's kind of partially what I think it is, is that, like, maybe Nintendo almost in a way feels, like, kind of one-upped by it. And so, like, having this netcode next to Ultimate being broadcast, which is notorious for having terrible internet. Then pay um, these guys. And yeah. then have them do it. If they're, if you like, what is the ego game? Give It's the same thing with fucking Bethesda. It's like, if you have someone that just did all this with the thought of no financial gain to do it, they just did it out of passion, I bet they'd be more than thrilled if you were like, hey, here's this money for the hard work you just did with no end in sight other than passion. So... Yeah. Give fucking support them, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I just... Like, part of me, like, has always been frustrated with Melee because the people who love it will, like, never stop playing it. And, like, the newer games always seem to have, like, a big problem in, like, the Melee fan base of, like, oh, well, it doesn't yeah, do Yeah, they're this, a whole or... different breed of annoying, but that's not the point yeah. I'm trying to make. No, of course, of course, of course. Just me personally, it's like... Yeah, I, and the, they were trying to like please both audiences. They were like, okay, the people who have moved on to Ultimate, and quite a few melee people have moved to Ultimate, primarily. It's but, really good. Uh, it's a good game, and I, yeah, I think it was really cool good. that they're like trying to play to both audiences and broadcast both. But to like cancel the entire event over their use of like Slippy is it's pretty uh pretty bad, dude. It's not a great look, it's, but. Nintendo it's, is, yeah. like, in the business of not giving a shit about, like, competitive you know, melee. You think about it, too, and, you know, the craziest bit about this is, you know, the company that did do what I pitched is fucking Sega. And you know what? It turned out really well for them because yeah. Sonic Mania is fantastic and everybody loved it. And it was that thing where it was, like, people out of passion were just making this thing that they know they can't release for any financial gain because it has fucking Sonic in it. And then they're like... Well, hey, you guys think you can do better? Give it a try then. And they definitely did. And yeah. like, it's uh, it's the same thing here. It's like these people already know they did a better thing. Just fucking, get, you got the money. Like, just do it. It's yeah. rid it's ridiculous. I mean, it's cool technology uh. too. Like, ultimate. Like, they did release a patch that like slightly fixed some network issues, but it didn't introduce anything incredible. Like, it's no. noticeable, but not. Not as much as what rollback did for for online all, melee. You know, all I'm saying is it's probably not going to be happening. But that Switch Pro better have a fucking Ethernet port on it. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. It it better it, it better, better have that yeah. or, at the very least, a uh, you know Wi-Fi five or six in there or something. Because Jesus Christ, <laughs> like it's, it's pretty it's pretty rotten. It's a pretty yeah. rotten online. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's the other thing too. Is Nintendo tapes like eight, like eight steps in the right direction, then like ten steps backwards. Just even though they're like, we, it's like, all right, we're doing the proper online. You got online stuff, and it's like, however, you there's don't always have chat. you got to use an app. You got to do this. We still want friend codes. And you're like, guys, fucking stop. I get, get out of your get out of this, your own fucking way. Like, yeah, that's it, all it comes down to. The thing is, to. is like, I understand that they have. It's something to do with. I have to imagine it's something to do with parental guidelines to some extent. Like, they want to make it the most family-friendly whatever the fuck ever. Yeah. The thing is, though, is I feel like every person at this point understands if your device goes on the internet, you have just accepted the assumed risk of being presented whatever happens on there. It's of not course, like... but uh, like That's, you know... Parental controls are in the Switch, and it's not rocket scientists... Or it's not. it doesn't take rocket scientists to figure out, like, okay... If we did introduce chat to the Switch Online, like you could send messages and do voice chat natively, it doesn't take a team of people to be like, hey, maybe we just disable that feature if you have parental controls on. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, if you have parental controls on, you have to like do friend codes or you have to do like friend patterns or you have to add Dude. people locally. Like you, if, you're, if you're a little kid, you can't have friends that are online. Okay, yeah, turn on the parent controls. Like... Like, what the fuck? Or, I mean, at the same time, too, it's like, most of that stuff, just, you know, put a filter on it. Every game has a profanity filter, even ones that don't need one. They have them. Yeah. So just, you know, it's, put it on. It's 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 not, you know, it's not a huge deal here. Now, granted, I don't have children, so maybe it's not, you know, maybe I'm missing some key element to this, but I feel like, uh, as a whole, especially with the Switch being such a, a diverse console for so many types of folks it just seems 
um, you know, a little ridiculous. It's, I guess it's, this whole the whole yeah. setup. It's it's they've never gotten out of their own way when it comes to that stuff, and it's no secret. Like everybody That's knows crazy. it. Um, but I would like for them to at least like put two and two together and and know that. Yeah, like some of these features they do to protect like families and children. It's like other consoles are doing this but like better already. Like Yeah, and you and and again you are the kid console. So it's like it, or, or what most people or per- parents the perception. Would perceive as. Yeah. Yeah, the perception of the the family console or whatever. So it's like you know, come on guys, put it put the, put it together. Just you're doing good. I mean, you're getting better, but you just, you know, take it the next step and at least get up to, you know, I don't know, 2005, 2006, maybe. I mean, dude, it was like more than 10 years ago where the the Nintendo Wii had Wii Connect 24, like their online thing, and it was absolute trash. And it's like, oh, yeah. but they're getting there. That was like 12 fucking years ago at this point. Like, they yeah. were getting there then. And like... Yeah. It's like been this like long uphill struggle taking baby steps with no shoes on. Yeah. It's just very it's, weird. It's the Bethesda shit again, though, where you're just like, hey, guys, are you going to do something with this engine? They're like, well, we're, I mean, stuff doesn't clip through the environment as often. You're like, okay, okay yeah, well, I mean, but you guys want to do a little bit more with it? And they're like, well, we, um, well, we're going to make this, we're going to add online to this one. And I was like, oh, you guys made a new engine? Ah, uh, well, yeah, well, no, we, we, uh, dude, it's in there. And I was like, what do you mean it's in there? They're like, ah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's there. It's the same one. Uh, what's the Todd Howard's news engine? Uh, no, so they, oh, new engine. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I don't know if I brought this up last week, but we kind of talked about it. Oh, you, yeah, you did a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So they did say that they like, where does it from rendering it to animation pathing to procedural generation? I don't want to say everything, but it's a significant overhaul taking us longer than we would have liked, but it's going to power everything we're doing with Starfield and Elder Scrolls six. When people see the results, hopefully they'll be as happy as we are with what is on the screen and how we can go about making our games. Why That's bring this up? the most general statement that I've ever heard in my life. For sure, for sure. But what is very frustrating is that Bethesda has id software, right? The new yeah. id tech for Doom Eternal is very good looking. It's a, it, it, From what I understand from a development perspective, id tech is like a fairly robust platform. Uh, yeah. And they have that. So why are they fucking wasting time trying to... Li- I think they're still using Gamebryo, and they're trying well, to build on top of that, and it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I think the thing is, too, is like those are, those are very different games. So I could understand that maybe the engine doesn't necessarily support, like, you know, giant open maps and all this at any given time. Cause yeah. Because I know with, like... Um, when when Rage first came out, that was the same engine, and that had you could actually, because it was so new, you could sort of see how it operated because it was basically like, you would, pretty much everything out of the player's view behind you or anything was completely like blurred and gone to some extent. So like when you would turn around, you would see everything like snap back into place, and you kind of yeah. get a little bit of that now. But then it was like very apparent, which at the time, once everything was in there, you're like, wow, this looks incredible. I can't believe like these textures and everything like this looks really great, um, but as it was like coming together, you sort of see it. So I could see that potentially that this like actually there's a really good when they did a documentary on Horizon Zero Dawn, they sort of showed how the engine worked uh, that that it and uh, Death Stranding are on with the the way the cone actually works and what you can see and what is being rendered around this certain space that's in there. Um, so I could imagine, because again, also Doom is like, uh, you know, you, you think about it too, it's like, it is like an intricate level and all this stuff, but it's a lot of corridors and there's a few open areas, but there's no really sustenance behind any of those areas yeah. either. It's like very, you know, I don't know. I could definitely see it 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 choking up on some bigger stuff, uh, but... I'm just saying the framework's chances there. Are, the framework's yeah. there and like id software like aside from epic games has been like 
on top of their their engine development like they were one of the first companies to embrace like the Vulcan API pretty heavily and Vulcan's been like yeah. a game changer for performance uh, you see more and more like mobile platforms moving to Vulcan APIs and uh, like I think Cyberpunk's going to support it out of the box so they've like always kind of been a pioneer in like graphical engines and like powering their games it's just very odd sure. to me that like they could just I feel like they could m do enough modification and leverage some talent uh, with id so within id software's like R and D uh, to get them an engine that like not only looks good but performs very well. Because Doom Eternal fucking looks fantastic and it runs as good as it does. It's like it still blows my mind that that game runs as well as it does with how it looks. Um, yeah, no, I mean that game runs phenomenally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I gotta imagine that this is uh that uh it's still their game braille engine. Yeah. Uh, I can't like that they've like I guess finally started to tweak after what fifteen to twenty years of using the same thing. They're finally like, All right, we'll we'll fix a few bugs, I guess, on there maybe and you're like, dudes, please guys. Again, you got the money. And you got a fan base that's done a lot of the work for you over the years already. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, 2011 was when I was looking at the earliest there. Yeah, nine years ago. It's crazy, dude. Uh, I was thinking of what games used it, uh, but it's it's a it's Bethesda's own engine. They now they call it the Creation Engine, I believe. Uh, sure. For their newer set of games. Sure they do. Uh, I could have sworn that like Warhammer Online used a version of Gamebryo Engine. Well, uh, and they may have before they changed it or something as well. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, when did this release? Scroll up there. Let's say 2010. Oblivion was. Oh on no, Gamebryo. there's 2001. Oh, Munch's Odyssey was made on this. Yeah. That's interesting. Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3. Epic Mickey, dude. What? What? It's a really weird game to make with this. Whoa. Yeah. Maple and Story Epic 2. Epic Mickey 2. Wait. Yeah, I remember Warhammer Online. Yeah. I know I know you did, buddy. It's okay. It's not coming back, but I know you miss it. I mean, it's, it's kind of back. It's kind of back. Kind of. I know you miss it. It's okay. But Games Workshop it. hasn't sent them a cease and desist because they understand that their fans love their property no because game workshop puts out a game every 25 minutes so what are they worried about <laughs> it's ridiculous how many fucking warhammer games exist <sighs> are you serious yeah it was on the front page of steam there was another one up there today <laughs> like Dude. it's ridiculous i think it's an expansion to whatever that one uh you know like that big diablo war, total war or whatever, whatever deal they think they do yeah I, I don't know, dog. They've made every kind of game under the sun. The only thing they haven't done is a fucking kart racer in the Warhammer universe, but I'm sure it's coming. That's coming. That, yeah, that's 100% They do Blood coming. Bowl, right? That fantasy football thing with mutants? Isn't that yeah, a Warhammer but, franchise? Yes, but or that game is... game workshops? That is also a, a board game. Uh, Blood Bowl oh, is one of the board games, and so they adapted that to a video game. But Sure. Yeah, Blood Bowl's weird. It's not... I don't think it's what you think it is. Have you ever played it? No, I've never had. I wonder if I own it and don't know that I do. So there's a very distinct possibility that I might. From what I gather, I think Blood or uh, Blood Bowl is like a turn-based like football strategy game. At least the board oh, game sure. was, and I think the the gameplay of the of the PC game is pretty similar. I do not. To that. I do not own this. I do own Blood Rain Betrayal though. If you remember that game. That sweet side scrolling 2D Blood Rain game. Ooh. Which, speaking of, they released Blood Rain 1 and 2, the PS2 version, and they released those in an updated 4K version on PC recently. So get hyped, bitch. Oh, yeah. so it's like a. Okay, yeah, I see this. Yeah. It's like some. Well, if it's a tactics game, I might like it, to be honest with you. I don't know. It's interesting. It's, it's like a. Uh... It's trying to follow the rules of the board game pretty close, I think. But yeah, it's like uh Sure. It's one of those. 
Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I would, don't know. I'd give it a try. I don't think I'd buy it, but if I'd give it a try. Like if it's if it was on Stadia, you would play it. Uh, actually, Christian, if it was on Amazon Luna, I would play it. Oh yeah. I'm in the Amazon Luna beta, so suck me, dude. Yeah, but you got to buy the controller now, don't you? Yeah, and pay for the service. So the beta is basically just buy it. Is <laughs> is what's pretty fucking annoying, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> that is kind of fucked. Uh, that is kind of fucked. Which I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to uh, try it from the browser with a controller I already have. I do want the controller just to have it, but I don't know that I'm going to. Because you can't even order it unless you're in the beta, but I can order it. Um, I just don't know if I want to spend 50 bucks on an Amazon controller that only works with Amazon Luna at the moment. Yeah. I'm sure you can yeah. use it with other stuff. Um also, because Amazon provides 9,000 services, it's kind of hard to fucking find it again. Like, where you get to Amazon Luna from their thing again. Because, like, it's like the same thing of trying to find, like, their uh, like their Twitch Prime reward stuff. I always have to, like, manually type that in. I can't ever find it from the actual Amazon page. Dude, I just usually not even Google sure. I think that that's their what? model now is, uh, like, why update our, our user interface? Just Google the shit. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah. i mean it really is because it's like i also am like i was trying to order something from amazon fresh but that's not exactly the same as amazon so i have to order like a certain set amount to then do their ordering through that or whatever it's really strange um i guess i guess i could show i could go over the games that are on luna real quick that's kind yeah. of news because yeah. i i uh i'll at least say what's here um it's honestly it's not a lot um, but, and it's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird semblance of stuff. Um, so you're looking at, um, uh, so we've got starting from the top, we'll go in order, I guess. Uh, there's a Plague's Tale, uh, Abzu, AO Tennis 2, uh, Atomic, Blasphemous, Blazing Chrome, Bloodstained Brothers, Castlevania Collection, Contra Collection, Control, Cook Serve Delicious 3, Cross Code, Deponia, Ed Edna and Harvey, uh, Everspace, Fury, Ghost of a Tale, Grid, Hard Reset, Iconoclast, Indivisible, Infinite Mini Golf, uh, The Pillars of Earth, Luminous, Metro Exodus, uh, Switch Force, Abduction, Overcooked 2, Readout, Res Infinite, which is one I might actually play. Rhyme, River City Girls, Shantae, Pirate's Curse, Shantae, Half Genie Hero, Sonic Mania, Steam World Dig, Steam World 2, Steam World High, Steam World Quest, Tacoma, Tangled Deep, Trails of the Kai, Mummy, The Mummy Remastered, uh, Sexy Brutal, Surge 1 and 2, Two Point Host Video, Victor VRAM, Wonder Boy, uh, Yuka's Tale, Ukulele, Ukulele Impossible Lair, Lair and YS, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 with uh Lake Ramosh of Donna or whatever. I can't really read what the name of that game is. Either way, that that's was a lot, lot just more than stadium. Things. <laughs> it is. It is. Um so I guess starting from the top, be happy to know that you can c play control on another system streamed. Yeah. Um no problem at all. Uh and you can also uh play the Surge one and two on another streaming or platform, no problem at all, because they are, seem to be on every single one of them. Yeah. Um I will say Shantae, the Pirates Curse and Half Genie Hero, that's kind of rad because those I've those are really cool only see on the Switch. They're definitely on Steam, but they're cool. Res Infinite is a good get. Um I'd say a Overcooked lot of these games really good. a lot like I'm looking at the list myself too. A lot of these games are actually pretty fucking solid to come out with right out of the gate it's uh, yeah you yeah, know i mean really it's not a bad list shadow it does, tactics for whatever is a reason, fantastic game too which one shadow uh, shadow tactics see and i don't see that on here that's oh shadow tactics yes there we go yeah i didn't mention that's that a, that's a pretty damn good game I've, you know, I've tried to play that game so many times, and it, for whatever reason, I get a crash on the loading screen every time. I've played the regular hey. version and the, the Xbox Game Pass version. They both have, and I maybe, wanted to finish that game. Maybe third time's the charm with Amazon Luna. Amazon yeah. Luna, and yeah, maybe it is. One weird thing I did find, and I don't know if this was just because I only really played uh, YS Chronicles, because um, it was on sale on Switch, so I was playing it to see if I wanted to actually pick up the Switch one. Uh, the weird thing is, though, is the... 
uh, if I was looking at an Xbox controller, X was accept and A was back, which was really weird. And I don't know if this was just by virtue of that game or the platform itself. Um, it was it was just really strange. I've never had a game where X was accept and A was to go back. Uh, even even on Switch, it's like. What is it? A is except B is back. Yeah. Which is still the right and and bottom. This was left and bottom, which was really it was just weird. It was yeah. really weird. Um, well, like the Japanese confirm buttons and stuff have always been kind of weird on other consoles. What's the same as the Switch? Yeah. Which is fine, but this was opposite of that. So this was left and bottom instead of right and bottom yeah. or bottom and right, whatever. Yeah, that's even how weirder. it normally is. It was really strange. I don't again. I don't know if that's their platforms setup or whatever, um, or if it's it's not this game. It's the three D one. It's like the it's five six seven eight Y S eight. Oh, I was just um, looking at footage for myself because I I've heard oh, of these games. Oh, I'm sorry. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have played a few of them. Yeah. But this was the like three D open ended one that they kind of made recent. I think this is the most recent one. Okay, I got uh, you. But it, it, it's more in line with um, what is that? Uh, what is that game? They made two of them for the Switch. And it was on the 3DS as well. Yokai Watch. Ta- Yokai Watch. N- no, I'm just no. Kidding. But hey, you're asking the real question. Where's uh, that uh, franchise at? Disappeared, dude. Uh, not uh, where's not popular Watch for enough. The Switch, dog. Not popular enough in America. That's that's the. I would play another one. Those were really fucking weird. Those creatures were really weird. At yeah. least it was like somewhat interesting. But I hated the battle system to be totally honest, because you had to do a bunch of weird touchscreen shit every time. Didn't care for that. But the creatures uh, were really captivating. Is yeast? I, I think it's pronounced yeast. Is this? Uh, is this like a uh, Chronicles? Yeah. Is it a fucking uh, role play like a strategy game? Is it like a? Like real time no, action, it, turn based. If or? I could, if I could think, Xenoblade Chronicles. Okay, it plays similar to that game, but there's like it's a little bit more action oriented than that one is. Gotcha. Uh, it's like it's not really as timing based. You have like cooldowns and some other stuff. Uh, and um, I had a friend compare it to Monster Hunter, which is the only reason I looked at it. But I'm starting to realize a lot of people compare stuff to Monster Hunter don't really know what they're talking about. Uh, but it seemed neat, and it was on sale for like twenty three at the time. Uh, but I ended up not picking it up. Oh, it still is. Look at that. Nice, nice. Uh, but Maybe I passed on look. it and went for Mario Party, Super Mario Party, so that me and the partner could have something to play. But uh, you know. Well, hey, let's talk we'll about it after we take a break. Yeah. Uh, I was there's one. I was trying to think if there's anything else about Luna. Yeah. No, I haven't played it yet. The only again, like I said, the only thing is is being invited to the beta just is invited to spend money on their platform, which I think is a little weird. I don't really care for that. Pay up, dude. Uh, and you only and you only have a seven day free trial as well, which is a little weird, especially considering it's fucking Amazon and they've got so much money. And during this pandemic, have made even more money than so much money. Um, I'm surprised it's not uh, like uh, it's not like just hey, if you have Prime, buy the controller. Here you go. That's the other thing. I do have Prime. And that's not any discounted anything either. It's that's like odd. That's very odd. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing like one. Yes, this service should just be rolled into Prime, uh, or or maybe an additional couple bucks or something. Which I guess the the service of their own is out of the gate only like I think it's five ninety nine a month or something like that. the The thing about it though is is like. None of these are, like, new games either. There's not, like, any exclusive for one. There's no exclusives on here. And it is only, like, new, yeah, new games, I guess. Uh, Or not new games, I mean. So games that have been out for quite a while. So I'm not really sure, like, the pull to this. I guess we haven't played any of these. Like, yeah. Like I said, YS is the only one. Or maybe uh, Legends of the Heroes, Trails of the Cold Steel, because I haven't played that before. So maybe those two i guess i mean that's for me personally but either way i don't know it's like (laughs) it's weird it's a weird collection all these streaming services are really weird because they're coming out of the gate with like not compelling like it's a good library but it's not a compelling library to to go i need this i feel you i feel you 
I think that um, that's where like the channels and stuff are going to come into play. I think that that's where like that side of Luna is a little more enticing where it's like publishers yeah. can like, like, Hey, do you want to play all of Devolver Digital's games in one place? Like subscribe to the Do Devolver Digital channel and here's all these games here. Uh, like that, that prospect seems kind of cool to me depending on what the, no, the I, offering is, you know? I agree. I think all these need to be able to be downloaded or streamed, not just one. Yeah. I think that's the big, I think that's the thing for me is like, uh, I mean, the streaming tech seems to work well from the little bit I played with this so far. I'm going to spend more time with it this week and, and, or through my seven day trial and, uh, uh, of my beta access, <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. going to try and, uh, give it a little more just to see the actual performance side of stuff with it. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's another, they're, they're all so strange and they're not really offering like any of them so far. I've not really offered like a, uh, a man, I need this or any reason to not get a console instead like that idea, you know, it's not, and I don't necessarily experience it much, but the fear of missing out or whatever that a lot of people do, especially with these new consoles you're seeing it too, because people are spending fucking twelve hundred dollars to buy secondhand ones or whatever. Um, it's like I kind of get it there because that's a new great thing, but with this, like you don't feel any. I haven't felt any desire to do any of these, even as someone like into tech or whatever. I, like the tech is super interesting, but there's no like draw to to do any of this stuff. I mean, even when Stadia was first announced and coming out, there was never like, oh, I got to try that. I was like, eh, yeah, I'll, you know, if it comes around, I'll take a look. And yeah. same with this. And then same with, uh, you know, Nvidia's one and the Xbox one, all of them are like, I mean, again, I think Xbox has probably got the one still that's going to be the best just because one, it seems to work really well. And the library is there and will be updated with new stuff, you know, like their other shit is. And in addition to, like you were saying last week with the ecosystem of having an Xbox and a PC and then a phone or whatever, why would you have any of these other things? Because that's, you know... That's all of it. That's like all the yeah. all the worlds combined. Well, and I think too, like, given the amount of time you're probably using this stream thing on your phone, I don't think you're going to be like, oh shit, I'm missing out on this game in the limited time I'm, you know playing xbox to go yeah on my phone or whatever you're not like oh, i'm missing the amazon exclusive well i mean one there isn't one but two you're not you know what i mean it's yeah. like i could see if this somehow was your only avenue to play games at all then sure but i i find you know fire I mean, up hell, that you uh, xbox you should one fire up second that hand for cheat you should Go fire ahead. up that Stadia red subreddit and like look at the amount of people on there saying like, "Oh, this is like, I ditched all my consoles for this," and it's like, "Whoa, like holy shit!" Like, it's are very odd. Some, no, are you no, 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 something no. Up? No, when we're when we take our break, you should you should look at just flip through some of the th the things on the subreddit because what it, what is it? R, it's empty in here. Yeah, <laughs> what R, is the name uh, of the R three members in this sub. Like, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, Are my choices bad? Is that what it was? <laughs> it's, uh, Is that what the subreddit was? I can't it's, remember. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. I mean, it's cool. I it's cool even... tech, but yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, but to ditch all consoles? Are you fucking high? <laughs> like, if you love games that much, but then you've decided that this is how you want to experience them? Yeah. What, my man? That can't be it's real. Very, it's very odd. It's very odd. They gotta be. They're they're doing bits, right? Come on, dude. Don't fucking come Google on, don't play me like this. Dog. Google employees, dude. It's the only explanation. Yeah, that's what it's. It's Google plants. Yeah, they're yeah. just like in there going, yeah, 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 yeah. We did. We got Revolver. I even had a PS5. I just went ahead and sold it because Stadia is so good. <laughs> I had two RTX 3080s, and I was gonna sell one of them. I just sold both of them because I just Stadia is so good. Yeah, come on, who dude. needs them? Fucking who needs them? Who needs it? I was I was actually just I realized after about a week I was just eating my lunch on top of a thirty eighty box. I didn't even need the fucking thing, so it's just a stadium, man. <laughs> I use it as a trade to roll my weed, dude. I don't even need it. Dude. Yeah, I didn't even need I didn't even need it anymore. I was just sitting there thinking like, wow, I don't even understand why I have this computer anymore. I bought an Xbox Series X and I was like, Well, I can't I don't even 
I, it just blows hot air in my room. I don't need a space here, so I just got a stadium instead. I sold uh, it. Dude, it doesn't even have the Google Assistant, dude, so I sold it. I just got rid of the bitch. Bosch just takes up too much space, dude. I don't know. I just do Stadia. I just need a Chromecast. You got to be fucking out of your mind, dude. These people are lying. <laughs> The people are lying, dude. There's no way. There's no way. Yeah. Like as good as they like as good as the text happens to be at times, there's no fucking way that this is the experience you want. In addition to any place with data caps, I was looking at Luna and it's like an average of like uh what was it like ten to eighteen gigs per hour for stream like streaming in. That's that's a kind of a lot. Depending upon yeah. what your uh, cap is, if you're in a place that has one, I know we used to, and it was only 100 gigs, so that's 10 hours of only this, and then that's it, uh, and then you're starting to pay $50 every gig or some shit. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, or it was whatever it was, it was like every 10, it was like $10 every 50 gigs or something, something ridiculous. Yeah, um, something stupid. But yeah, it's ba- it's a bad proposition. <laughs> I think all of them right now are bad, except for Xbox. Again, we'll, if, ex- we'll get into it because I, I I've tried a lot of them, but yeah, let's yeah. Uh, let's take a quick little break. And we'll we'll get into yeah, it a little and let's more. see if Microsoft will sponsor us when we get back. Yeah, fucking if we haven't sucked their cock so hard every <laughs> week. <laughs> Join Xbox. I don't even Game want Pass. an Xbox at all. I'm just like, <laughs> all, right, all right, yeah, we'll be right back, guys. Cool. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We're I'm hot on the trails of. Stadia's Reddit forum, and boy howdy was I was I shooketh when I saw yeah. the amount of love and support that Stadia has accrued over the years. It's pretty surprising. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, you know, I would say I apologize to you guys, but I don't, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I still think it's a bit of a joke. I'm sorry for not apologizing. It, uh, you know, look, it is cool that you can play. Uh, you know, you get to play Abzu on your, you get to pay $20 to play Abzu on your Amazon Fire tablet with, uh, your Logitech wireless controller. That's awesome. I'm very happy for you guys that that's the experience you get to have. Um, and, uh, that's, that's great for you guys. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) Again, it's interesting tech. Uh, I just, it's not for me, dog. Uh, and, uh, well, you know, I don't think Luna's going to change my mind anytime soon, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so games this week, uh, played a few different things. I've still got a few more to look at tonight, I think, and or tomorrow. Honestly, spent a lot of time rewatching all of Trailer Park Boys for the probably eighth time. So that has That's taken a, up yeah. a lot of my free time here. Um, it's still really funny. <laughs> continually it's still fucking so funny is it is it funnier uh, than fallout 76 yeah uh yeah definitely fallout 76 <laughs> becomes very frustrating a lot of the time as fun as the game can be uh it's just the uh, it's the same argument i've had continually and i actually was in an argument with somebody on the reddit page recently about this as well um because the game just still has so many problems and weird constraints that I don't understand exactly why they're in place. And this person's argument was basic. Like, I, I guess effectively what I was saying is, like, I don't understand, like, why there's still a restraint on caps, why there's a restraint on uh, daily intake currency, why the script is has a currency limit. While everything in the game has a currency limit with the exception of levels is the only thing in this game that doesn't cap, which is the only thing I think should cap in this game. Um, and then just give us, you know, some prestige level or, or a, uh, 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 well, one more than anything, an option to respec whenever you want, rather than having to accrued, uh, <coughs> double the amount of levels to then do that, which is just yeah. asinine. Um, and still is just completely asinine. I don't understand it. His argument was that games aren't supposed to be played 24 seven. And this is a casual experience. So the other the other big issue, and this is a big complaint I see on the forums all the time, is just like the the uh, the RNG on weapons is absolutely abysmal. Like it's like this thing where like if you're going for a certain type of um, rare item with a roll on it or whatever, uh, your chances are are equal to if not uh, lower than trying to win the actual lottery. Like it it's just crazy. And that was the thing I was trying to bring up was just like 
I get that it's a casual game. I get that this stuff doesn't matter. But then if the stuff doesn't matter, why is it so hard to obtain? Like, what is the general need for all of these items to be so difficult to get if if in the end it doesn't matter like every enemy is dying and a hit or two is as it is there's no raid content really there's like two actual bosses in the entire game one that was at launch and then one they added i think the last patch which is like a a a colossal wendigo beast um and so yeah, the argument was basically like, then what's all this point? It's like, well, it's not supposed to be played 24 hours a day. And I was like, I effectively, the person I was arguing with, it just everything boiled down to like, the game's not meant to be played all the time. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. What I don't understand, though, is again, like, I don't understand the point of the game anymore. I never did, but at, the more they add stuff to it, the less I sort of understand what they're going for, like what the direction of this game is actually trying to be. Um, because with Brotherhood, like, it's a bit more story content. It doesn't seem extremely long. I've played maybe two-ish hours of it so far, and it feels like I'm kind of coming up on the end of whatever this is offering, and I'm sure it'll culminate in, like, a new daily to do every day or something like that, to then start getting back into the slot machine or whatever to get the item, um, or something for your gear type or whatever. But again, the gear is really trivial. It doesn't really seem to matter. Um, and then again, all the cool or neater cosmetic stuff doesn't usually come from like dropped plans. It all comes out of the store that you have to actually buy, um, which has been one of the biggest issues with this is like they released a, um, a DLC pack for the brotherhood content, which is like, uh, a camp item, a backpack, an emote and a paint job for the power armor. And it's like $30, which is insane. Jesus uh, Christ. Like it's, it's, fu- it's ridiculous. And if you're Australian, it's like 50 bucks, which is just crazy. Um, especially considering at this point you can pre-order like cyberpunk on console for 50 bucks right now. 30 is insane for some skins and shit. Yeah. Uh, I've also had like a lot of issue with the, the, the camp, any large structure in a camp being able to be uh, dismantled or, or any of that stuff. Like I've had a lot of trouble with that. I've had, I've had one item on my camp for two years that I cannot do anything with. And I've mentioned it plenty of times, but um, yeah. So the content itself seems fine. I mean, it's more of the same stuff. You're like sort of helping the brotherhood uh, and kind of, it's kind of that same thing where it sort of feels like pseudo choice. Like you have a choice in the matter, but at the end of the day, if you actually want to go do anything, you have to just sort of accept whatever they're giving you. So it, it never really feels like choice is there, really. Like, there's dialogue options, but it's a sort of a similar thing to fall. It's, like, a little more covered than Fallout 4 was, where every every option there was just, like, do you want to do a disgruntled yes or a regular yes? And you're like, I'll, I guess I'll just say yes. And then <laughs> this is sort of like, are you begrudgingly accepting this offer? I know you don't want to do it. Do you want to go get more information before you do the exact same thing? Um, there are a few things that come in with, like, charisma checks and stuff but it it mostly boils down to like just not having to do combat instead of like any other major thing um so it's you know it it is what it is it's cool that we keep getting stuff for this game because again i still like the game but it like there's still not a dungeon in the game or anything either like there's just not I i don't know i just don't know the direction and it doesn't seem like they're laying out a good direction other than like we want you to be here every day because we've limited everything to a daily limit. So I, I, you know, our investors are happy if you show up every day, but I don't really know why you're showing up every day, I guess. Like Mm -hmm. there's just not really a a drive there. No real plan um, for you when you get there. Yeah. No. and, And even as a casual social experiment, like, or experience, like I could definitely see like, you know, chatting with your friends and stuff in the game or whatever and doing that, and that's totally fine. But even then, there's not, like, a whole hell of a lot you could do uh, in there together, you know? Because, again, there's not, like, a dungeon. There's not really raids. There's, like, kind of one of the vaults is sort of that way, or it used to be, um, but they kind of toned it down a little bit. Um, They did, at one point, add, like, a better grouping setup. But that's another weird thing, too, is, like, if you... Once they added the thing to where groups were easier to come by or, like, you could start just joining a group with anybody on the server just at random to then get, like, an overall better experience that worked towards your um, season pass deal or whatever, it sort of then nullified you spending $100 for your private world, basically. Because then 
you get less you get less things if you don't do their other worlds unless you have people that are consistently playing with you always when you're online specifically in your world that you've paid for or whatever um so that becomes of lesser of value i think at that point as well um i guess you're not competing with other groups if you're always playing with the same group or whatever uh but yeah it's just i don't know it's still really weird the game's just all over the place i just don't really know what their direction is and i wish they would kind of at least lay something out that made it seem like it made more sense where they were going Mm -hmm. uh or what their bigger plans were instead of just adding kind of piecemeal content um another comparison with that that dlc uh that that we're talking about on the reddit page was like if you remember Far Harbor for Fallout 4, which is like probably the best expansion for that game, it yeah. was like really good, super was, long, really well put together. Yeah, that was only twenty four dollars. So <laughs> that all that content and that story stuff there was still cheaper than a uh, few skins and one camp item. So again, just I don't know, and and it's another weird thing too where you look at the reviews for that and people on there are like. Oh, I know it's ridiculous, but I, they did a really good job. I love this. All that, you know, I, I, I support them continuing on. And it's like, I don't, I get it. Cause I was that way in the beginning, but it's harder and harder to sort of, uh, champion them there, I guess. Um, and yeah, and then I'll, I'm going to talk about dark siders three really quick. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. uh, and then, uh, probably bloodstain for a second before I move on to the bigger ones. Um, but yeah, Darksiders 3, I, I ended up forgetting to pause my Humble Monthly, and uh, that this was in there, so I was like, well, I'll give it a try again. Uh, and at some point, they added a classic mode to this game uh, to where it uh, plays more like the original two do, uh, so it's not the like same Dark Souls-y setup they made for this one. Uh, from what I understand, it's definitely made the game like a bit easier overall. Um, but it has made it feel more like a proper, uh, I guess part of the trilogy maybe rather than making it its own, you know, trying to do its own unique thing. Um, I would say the only downside to that is just because the checkpoints are still tied to the, to the pseudo bonfire setup, uh, that it's like a little, it takes a knock back a little bit there because like sometimes you'll die and you'll be sent back quite a bit just because that was already your last like, you know, bonfire or whatever it was. Um, but the actual game itself was pretty fun. Uh, I've enjoyed it so far. I've gotten to a boss. that's like a real pain in the ass though. I think it's, I think I'm on six of the seven deadly sins. Um, and he is just, I, I don't know what I'm missing about him. That is making him just like, it doesn't seem like any of the attacks are dodgeable. And then he has like three stages to him or some shit. And I've, I've made it past the first one like once. Uh, I think I'm playing it on one of the harder difficulties. I can't remember which one, but um, yeah. So I'll probably check back in with that. But I, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it, I guess I'll say compared to what it was when I played it initially. Uh, yeah. So, think, so uh, <clears throat> what are the major differences with the classic mode? Um, It's more like the, uh, you're, you're, you you're not locked animations anymore, so you can you can dodge out of an attack where you couldn't before. So it sort of takes away that Dark Soulsy feel of like if you've started a heavy attack, you're not tied to just doing the heavy. You can now dodge out of the way, um, and that's I think that's really like the biggest difference. Like there's I think there's something to do with the uh, the item usage cooldown or something as well, maybe tied to it, um, something like that, which there still is a cooldown and all that too. So it, I don't know if it's like just shorter or if there is one at all. Um, but it, it does, uh, it does, it, it does seem to, from what I remember playing this when it first came out and was on game pass or whatever, it does definitely feel more in line from what I remember about the other games. I would almost put this above the first game, but I personally really liked the second game uh, and it's open world design stuff more than the first one. Uh, but uh, other people also had the critique of not liking that one because of that reason. So, you know, it, it, there's two sides to it, but, uh, I really like the, the second game and this one feels like slightly under that one, but to me above the first yeah. one, I, th- I think the, especially at this point too, the first one feels <sighs> kind of dated. Yeah. I tried but. to go back to the re what did they call it? It was a horrible, horrible title when they remastered it, the. Oh, uh, 
Yeah, it was war mastered uh, or something terrible. Like, yeah, well, <laughs> because you're the, you're the war, the horseman of the apocalypse, but your name is War. Yeah, it was um, one of I the just, four horsemen. War, I think it was like war mastered or something like that, or. Yeah, well, know. it's not it's not near as bad as what was uh what was, I mean it's I guess it's on the same level of bad as uh uh what was it um, Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered Edition because you're oh, on Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty rough too. That's pretty egregious. Uh, uh let's see, Dark Siders. Uh, oh yeah, War Mastered Edition. Yeah, is what it says. I tried yeah, to get into know. it, but like, yeah, like you said, it's just maybe a little dated. Um, yeah, the first one feels a little dated. The second one, I think, still holds up really well, um, and I think it did. It did then too, because it was just, uh, you know, it has that hook of like new gear and armor all the time as well, because you're always picking up items and stuff like that. And I like that aspect of games when it gives it to you, uh, and so it feels a little bit more like a loot game. It feels a little bit more like a 3D kind of uh, Diablo, I guess, than yeah. Then the first one was maybe more of a Zelda. And I think this one hits a good bridge between the two of those. Um, and then I'll say I played Bloodstained really quickly. Uh, Bloodstained was super good. Uh, it's been out forever, so most of you have probably played it or seen it or, to some extent. Uh, but it is um, it's super good. It holds up really well. They're still updating this game, and they're updating it into 2021, uh, which is super surprising i didn't think they would be adding new content to it but they they have been uh there's a there's a mode in it now where you can play as i think one of the i think one of four bosses uh in like this weird mode that i haven't quite played yet uh because i'm still and like i guess i'm like 85 percent done <clears throat> with the story um i honestly haven't paid too much attention to the story itself uh but the the moment to uh, moment is really good is, yeah What's that? I was just saying the moment to moment's really good. Um, yeah, the action is really good. It, even for a game that really at its core has like two buttons more or less and then like uh but the but the random shard attack stuff is really interesting. You have a lot of fun stuff with it. Um my biggest disappointment though is there was supposed to be a planned roguelike mode for this game, but they have since canceled that, which is a huge shame. That was like their 5 million Kickstarter bonus. Uh and then they went on record I think it, early this year and was like Hey, we, it, the engine's just not set up for it, whatever. And it's like, I think you would have already known that, but whatever. Yeah. Um, which is kind of a shame because that was sort of the reason I bought it. I was like, oh, yeah, it's gonna have, it has a roguelike mode. Awesome. And then it was like, actually, by the way, now that you've played eight hours of it, I just wanted you to know we don't actually have that in there. And I was like, oh, very cool. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but again, I've ended up really liking the game. So I, I can't really say anything too bad about it. Um, yeah, it's good I'm shit. I'm excited to finish it. It's, it's fun. It's real fun. Um, and surprising, a lot of the mechanics and level design stuff too all have their kind of own unique little thing, and then they they bring all those back together, and then in Metroidvania fashion, you know, are utilized later on to go back through the castle and stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's really cool. It's it's a good game if you haven't played it. It was I think during the Steam sale, fifteen bucks, which is more than a good that's, price for that game. Pretty good steal. I got it for pretty cheap for the Switch too. Has uh, they, have they performance point. patched it at all? Because I heard that was the big issue with that it's, version is why I didn't get that one. I mean, it's all right. It, it obviously runs at a lower frame rate, but it, it's not as choppy as it was. I, I think mm -hmm. it's more consistent now. Um, okay. But it definitely performs, I mean, obviously performs better on the other consoles and PC. Uh, and oh, that PCs, was a big... Uh, that, that was a news thing we forgot to mention. Um I don't know if you knew this, but the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X both um, are have better hardware than the Nintendo Switch. Oh, really? That's news. The fuck? Yeah. I I saw an article about that earlier this week. Dude, we should uh, talk. I don't about know if that. you knew, but they it performs better than the Switch. Dude, yeah. I thought the Switch I was know. like the end all be all, but yeah, we all did. But it turns out Sony's back at it again and microsoft's really chomping at the bit there There's so wait you're telling me wild you're telling me that 15 frames a second in age of calamity is not the future of gaming because i could have sworn it was i really it turns, out, it isn't. It turns out your money's on the wrong horse you might even <sighs> want to try stadia it's an online streaming service for video games if you've never heard of it no i, I mean i honestly was thinking about selling my consoles um i think you should because at this point what you can do is you can actually you can you can play Assassin's Creed Valhalla 
You can pay $60 to pay a Assassin's Creed Valhalla on an iPhone 5 in your hot tub with a uh, with a uh, Ouya controller if you want. That's cool. I should yeah, actually do that. while you're taking a bath. I think yeah. you should, dude. Sounds like a good idea. It's the most comfortable way to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> on a four-inch screen with an Ouya controller is the only way I think in games your, should be experienced. In your Streamed over Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so what the hell is this game, Kelly? It's the shit. It's so fucking fun. So Ring of Ring of Pain is a. I I actually picked this up on the Switch. Uh, there is a PC version of it out as well. Um, but it is a roguelike card game. Uh, based on the Ring, and so the, not the Ring, the movie, the Ring of Pain being the way the cards are displayed. So, effectively, what happens is there's a there's two front cards. Um, and you can decide to attack either one of them, uh, or you can rotate the ring either direction. However, there is a stealth mechanic tied to moving past an enemy to the right. So you, if your stealth stat is high enough, you can sneak past them without doing damage, or you can take like a lesser hit, uh, and move past them depending upon the type of enemy it is. And you're rotating the ring to gather items for your item bar or health potions, etc., uh, and different stat points and stuff like that. Uh, effectively trying to get to the end of the ring, which is at the 16th stage. Um, I finished the game twice. There's, I think, three different endings technically, um, but two that I've I've gotten through so far. Uh, and then you have the interesting part becomes like the the way that you can optimize because there's no classes or anything, but the items that you find will sort of mitigate that. And it's like you'll find like a, like say a helmet that does like. Uh, poison damage as reflect whenever you get hit but then you'll find a dagger that does like two damage of poison when you hit in additional to your other damage and then you'll find pants that'll be like um uh front card will take poison damage when passed by or something so it's like you'll start to get these stats that will all stack towards you to where you're starting to play like a rogue kind of or it's like there's ones that are there's like a mechanic of freezing where it's like if you go past an enemy rotate past it you'll freeze um, them and then there's another hammer that'll do double damage to frozen enemies and stuff like that so you're kind of all sort of working on a weird build as you kind of go through based on what random item you get uh, there's at the moment 186 items in there so there's like a lot of shit that can be done in the, in the 14 slots that you have um, you also have a spell book that works based on how many enemies are killed so like every two or five enemies killed you can reuse your spell uh, and then there's a spell sheet that is a one-time use that you can also use, um, you know, to do certain stuff. Like the other interesting thing is this creature on the right here. So that's an exploding enemy. So what it's doing is it's chasing the player. Um, and actually the one on the left is a loot goblin effectively, but he'll run away from you. So now if he doesn't move to the right, he's going to take that full brunt of explosion damage, but it will explode the enemy next to him. But what you can do is... You can move past both of them to where the explosion enemy stays where he's at, and it'll blow up both of them, and then you can, you know, rotate back around. So there's a lot of strategy in, like, mitigating, and they do a lot with the enemies to sort of um, play into that. Like, there's one enemy that's, like, every three rotations, it'll transform into a enemy that has, uh, uh, like, spikes on it that does reflect damage or whatever. Or if you rotate it back and forth until he transforms again, he just is, like, a normal enemy. Uh, there's another one that, uh, the other more interesting thing too is there's different room types, but they'll be named sort of based on what's about to happen. So it'll be like, this is a volatile room, which basically means like everything in there has poison damage. This one will be like a, um, it'll, this a room will come up and it'll just say like, um, uh, like precision movement or something like that. And it's basically, you have to rotate the ring properly to where the explosion stuff will, stack up to blow everything else up without hitting you it can still hit you uh if if you're not careful and you won't necessarily die but the the proper way would to be would be to let it all kind of blow itself out um there's also there's these enemies that uh they're like these there's some enemies you can't move past they're like walled structures but there's one ring that starts out where there's two of them in the back and every time you move or do an action they'll rotate forward around and then until they're blocked you in completely and you can't kill them um the other thing about this game that people have complained about is like the rng is really extreme in it like and and to some extent it is like i've definitely had some runs that 
didn't even last the first ring, like because the items were all on the other side. And uh, and most of the time, I just decided to fight where I should have just rotated or done whatever to actually get the item first instead of doing something else. Um, but it can be like a little. It feels a little excessive, I think, with that. But I I think the I think a lot of this game is needs to be taken more literally than I think people are taking it. Like I think Ring of Pain is really the idea is that there's there's sort of potions all over the place. So I think the idea is you're really supposed to put yourself in more of a risk than you think you'd want to to get a better outcome, generally speaking. Yeah. Um because there's a lot of doors, like there's crossroad areas where you'll come to a set of doors where uh, it'll be like four different options and the doors are like pseudo color coded, but they never tell you like what the color code actually means. So you have to kind of figure that out on yourself. And then there'll be like a door icon that also doesn't really tell you what it is. Um, and in the roguelite element, it's also sort of similar to like binding of Isaac to where like, uh, for example, there's like a room called companions with like five enemies in it, but they're all like these cute dogs and, and, uh, frogs. And you can kill every single one of them. However, if like earlier you found this thing called the handler glove, you can pet all of them and then they'll just like leave. And if you've pet all of them uh, or killed all of them, I can't remember exactly what triggers it. Later on, there'll be a room that shows up with a guy in it and you can either choose to kill him, which will give you a tiny crown that you can finish the run with, or you can um, take all the items he's left and just leave him living, uh, which is again... There's, like, a weird story going on with it also. So there's, like, kind of a lot happening um, yeah. for what on the surface seems very simple. Um, but there's also, like, a lot of mechanics. There's also ranged enemies. There's poison enemies. Uh, there's ones that chase you. There's ones that run away. Uh, again, all the item customization. The other thing is, too, is not every item is necessarily beneficial. So it's, like, they'll have stat increases and decreases. But some of them are, like, hey, 20% of the time this will do explosive damage. But... Uh, twenty percent of the time, it'll heal the enemy you're fighting. So it'll be just like mitigating, like is this worth it or not? There's also you'll unlock certain items based on what you do in the run. Like there's there's an item that's just called a spoon, which is like really fast, but it has like there it is actually right there. So it's negative two to your health or to your defense and to your health uh, or to your shielding, but it's only three speed. So it's really fast, but it does like shit damage and defense. But if you make it through it with it, you unlock a different item that's more powerful that you can find later on and stuff. So there's a lot of like replayability to it. Um, and it definitely has that hook of like, ah, I'm just going to do another quick one real fast. Cause I, yeah. I, I could have done a little better here, Bob. And it's really hard for games, especially with the amount of roguelikes I play. It's really hard to find one where I really want to be like, all right, I'm gonna do another. I'm just gonna do a quick one. I'm gonna do another one. Whatever. Uh, and on the switch, it runs. The initial load time is like about a minute, but once you're actually in the game, it's like super fluid, and I've had no issues with performance there. Um, and uh, I absolutely love it. They've also showed out a roadmap already. It's not early access, but they are adding stuff to it pretty consistently. There's another patch that's supposed to be in December that adds like a uh, a choose your own stat increase sort of section. Uh, there's also a daily run in there already. Uh, the other big thing is their Reddit page is all run by the developers themselves, and they're super responsive. Like I've talked to the the lead art director, UI designer. It's like the same guy, and there's a, I've talked to him for the last like week back and forth just about parts of the game, and they've been like, "Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great one. We actually tried this thing already. We're doing this or whatever." So. That's, you know, really rad to mm -hmm. see, I guess, like a, a dev that's like super into the thing they're doing. Because um, I was mentioning something to him about a recycle mechanic and I was like, oh, yeah, Realm of the Dead God has uh, this uh, mechanic that would maybe work in here. And he's like, oh, shit, you know, I should check that game back out because I've owned it and I need to I'll see what, I'll see a little bit where you're talking about, whatever. It's like and it may be, you know, just smoke or whatever, but I don't know. The dudes talked to me for like a week straight. So it seems like they're. Yeah, it seems uh, like they're in the community. It's cool. They're they're into what's going on with what they're making and um, yeah it's it's fucking rad I really like it I can't wait to see what else they do with it it's it's one of my favorite games I've played this year um, yeah I'll check it out I'm and, I'm uh, into those uh, I'm into those card game roguelikes like your Slay the Spires and stuff they're pretty nice I I'd say it, it lands a little more similar maybe to uh, Monster Train if you haven't played that you definitely should play fucking Monster Train I've heard it's of phenomenal. it yeah. I've heard of it. Um, 
but uh, it's like 15 bucks, I think, on the Switch and on the PC at the moment. Um, it's on sale. It's done by Humble. It's published by Humble, but it's the f- studio's first game. Um, and for the first showing, it's it's incredible. Uh, yeah. Let me take a let me take a nice little drink here before we get into this. Oh one. hell Sorry. yeah, yeah yeah yeah. No problem. I'm uh, I'm curious to see what you si- what you think of this one. Um. Well. Um. Well. Okay. Godfall, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, this is Godfall. It's available on uh, new consoles. It's a next-gen title only, but it is available on PC through um, Epic's Game Store. Uh, I believe I found it on Humble's store for 47 which is, I think, too much money for this game. Um, I've played a good chunk of it. I'm about halfway to the level cap, though, now. Um, but I am already on the last world. I think, because uh, I think there's only three or four, maybe. If there's only three, I'm on the last one. If there's four, I'm, like, almost to the last one. Uh, y- yeah, so it... It's really it's really weird. Like, I, th- it seems like the foundation is really there for a live service game, but I'm not entirely sure this is a live service game or going to be one. Uh, it has, like... I guess good news is they've already patched it once with a pretty major patch, so that's helpful as far as, like, performance and other stuff goes, but I I don't know if that means they're going to keep going down the line with this stuff. Um, I would say, and and if you've watched reviews on it, it's probably going to be very similar criticisms to what other reviewers have said, but, like, uh, it doesn't seem like much of the stuff in this game really matters all that much. Like, as far as, like... You're always constantly getting items, but they don't really do a whole lot. Like, it's very minimal, like, stat increases, but basically, like, you're picking up stuff every single run, which obviously I like that endorphin hit of getting shit all the time, Uh, but I don't think any of it's, like, super meaningful. Yeah. And same with the weapons, too. Like, they, uh, there's, I think, five weapon types. I think it's longsword, greatsword, dagger, spear, hammer, I think are all of them. Um, and then everybody has a, uh, shield as well. Like that, that doesn't change. Um, but the, uh, the game really seems set up for the long sword. Like everything about it, it seems like that was the weapon they intended you to play this game with. Uh, the other ones are like, have their time and place sort of, but they're, I don't think anywhere near as fat, like as fast or as powerful as that ends up being um like the hammer is really slow and i don't actually think you can deflect hits the way you can with the long sword and then the daggers are really quick but they don't seem to do enough damage and they don't stagger enemies the same way that the long sword does either great sword same thing it's really slow the pole arm is about the same as the long sword and i found that those two to be like kind of the combo i've been using or that and the daggers i guess because sometimes you want some quick hits or whatever um The Valor Plate thing, too, is, like, kind of a bummer because you don't... Like, they all look really rad. Uh, And I will say the the worlds are definitely more than just corridors, which I initially thought. Like, it's it's actually all, like, each world is, like, a kind of a larger open map, which I didn't realize. I thought it was going to be, like, levels specifically designed or whatever. But it is, like, an over... it's It's a larger overworld map. The problem is, though, is, like, it's only those three to four maps and everything every mission is just done on the same maps so you're not continually going through corridors necessarily but you are continually going through the same space over and over again and kind of like maybe random enemies will spawn like along the way but nothing like too drastically different um and then when you finish any mission you can just choose to stay there and keep farming stuff or whatever if you feel like it um I will say the biggest criticism I have with the... Well, okay, I guess staying on the Valor Plates, though, is, like, they all don't really do... Like, one of them's, like, 10% chance to uh, do a poison on attack, and another one's, like, 10% to do ice, another one's, like, 10% to do poison, one's, like, 10% increase to... uh, Or 5% increase to crit damage, one's, like, 15%... Or 15% crit damage, 15% weak point damage, one of them's, like, 15% break, break point damage or whatever... 
So every Valor Plate, while looking extremely different, is basically like just a different status effect of the same caliber. It's not like wildly different. Nothing is really like overwhelmingly changing there. Um, and it's not like, as far as I can tell, none of the Valor Plates are specialized in any of the weapons specifically. They're all like kind of the same thing. Um, you could argue maybe with the status effect ones, having a faster weapon is better because they'll proc more often, maybe. Uh, I, I haven't noticed it really to do much of anything. Hey, can you hear me? And then you... Yeah. Yeah, hey, one second, one second. Sorry, guys, we had a bit of a, a, a kerfuffle, but we're, well, well, we're Just good. a little one. Just we're a small working one. Through it. Just lost, just lost some audio. It's no big deal. Uh, but yeah, back into Godfall... Um, it, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, it, yeah, like I said, the Valor plates just don't really make a lot of sense. They don't really do a whole lot different. You get like a different, um, uh, ultimate, but they're all the same ultimate necessarily, but it just is like instead of a 10% for poison damage, you get a 100% chance for poison damage for that, ex that period of time or whatever. Um, and then each of the weapons have like a light and heavy, um, powered up move i guess that you have like a ticker for um there's also like uh whenever you transition or change weapons if you built up your bar or whatever they'll do an attack there uh you can throw your shield and then when you catch it there's another move you can do that'll uh bounce enemies back whenever you catch it or something like that so there's a lot of like as you spec out there's more stuff that you can do with it or whatever um, and then the, the soul shatter thing is like, as you attack, basically it seems like almost an equal or a little less than equal part of the health taken will go into this soul damage. So then when you do your heavy attack, it'll blow all of that damage. So you'll do like a, uh, I don't want to say super attack, but you'll, you'll basically cut out the damage you would do normally and then do, uh, this shatter damage on top of it. So you do like usually once you get to about half if you have it filled with soul shatter or whatever you can hit it again they'll just die um which is probably the neatest i guess mechanic for all that but it it also sort of seems a, a little trivial um but the the issues come into just again the combat itself like the the camera is not great uh the lock on system also doesn't switch between enemies with like a with like the other stick like every lock on game does yeah yeah <laughs> so um you're yeah so you're stuck to whatever you've locked on to so most of the time you don't even use it but then you run into the thing where if you're like a hair off from being directly in front of them you'll just miss the swing or whatever so there's some issues with the camera stuff there uh the second issue, which I've never ran into in a game, which is really strange, is, like, because of all the graphical stuff they put in, like, all the bells and whistles, particle effects, flurry, and all that stuff, it actually gets super in the way of what you're looking at, so you can't even... Sometimes it'll completely cover the enemy, so you can't even really tell when they're about to attack. So, and, and for whatever reason, almost every attack that you can't... Uh, block with your shield uh, will knock you straight to the ground. So you're constantly stand, trying to stand back up and getting knocked down and stand back up and knocked down. And that just gets really irritating after a while because it seems like basically every attack will throw you to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, a, that's pretty frustrating. Uh, also, dodging out of the way of the attack is like every attack they have has a lunge and they're locked onto you as the target. So like even if you dodge out of the way three times, they'll just like sort of jump and then automatically have you targeted so they'll land basically right where you're going to dodge anyway. So if you don't dodge at, like, the exact precise second, and even sometimes when you do, they still land that hit no matter what, and then you're knocked down, then you have to get back up and do all this stuff, which is just frustrating to begin with. That doubly so, though, because you... Two things this game doesn't have that also almost all these games do have is... You are animation locked, and you also don't have animation queuing. So, like, you can't... If something's about to attack while you're about to attack, you can't pull up your shield to block, and you can't dodge out of the way either. So you're taking that hit no matter what. Again, then getting knocked down, having to stand back up or all that. It also doesn't have is, like, after you swing, if you've already hit the bumper to pull the shield up, 
it's not going to pull the shield up. You have to literally wait completely till the swing is done and then pull it up instead of like already knowing that you're going to be doing that and then just letting it come up. So there's this other thing of like everything has to be so precise for one, how loose the combat is already, and two, by virtue of how the the um by by how the uh uh like what 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 is the way to say this by how the like combat is set up like you you never have you you never feel like you're either going to one up them or whatever you're always like at a disadvantage no matter what it's either you can't see that they're about to attack you already dodged and you can't dodge out of it you can't block when you're going to you can't queue up a block to do it or whatever like nothing ever feels as fluid as it should because a lot of times when the combat is really meshing in your favor it feels it re- it really does feel good to play it but yeah. when it isn't it's like the most frustrating thing you can be playing so it's like it's this weird mix around and like they re- they really need to get rid of one of the two they need to either add the queue up or they need to add uh being able to break away because the other aspect too is like again because of all the particle effects and everything else the indicators of enemies being behind you is like super tiny and like either white or red which is either like all the particle stuff is all light looking, so there's either white in it or red for the like fury attacks or whatever. The red is like their strong attack, so that color, both either of those colors are going to be on the screen almost at any given time anyway, so that sort of mitigates your actual a- a- appearance of seeing the indicator of an enemy behind you or whatever. And yeah. um, none of them wait for priority like uh, a lot of other games will do sort of similar to like dark souls where like they can just continually attack over and over and over again which is which is fine because in like dark souls you can see one you have a better field of view so you can see the enemies better also the lock-on works way better and sort of positions the camera better for that um whereas this one just just doesn't um so that's not great either uh and then uh yeah like i said the story stuff is also like what kind of whatever it's it's sort of like the the voice acting and stuff is decent but the actual like story is sort of hit or miss there's also this they they change it about halfway through the story but initially like so you're you're in between there's no like hub area or whatever so your in between area is just like all your vapor plates in a row and then the armory on the back end and then the the literal floating head that gives you direction at the front of it so for the story stuff at the beginning, what you would do is you would talk to that floating head and then you would have to talk to the guy at the back of the room that just gives you some information and then you have to go back to the head and then back to that. So you're basically running back and forth this like small hallway over and over again to just get the story to then go to your mission where it's like about halfway through it, they put that guy next to the head, which they should have just done the entire time. I have no <laughs> idea why he was ever away from that guy because it's fucking yeah. so annoying. Um, especially because... You can also, and I will say to their credit, one interesting thing is you can pull up all of your inventory and all your menus during a cutscene, so you can just tweak your character while you're not listening to what they're saying. Also, again, sort of making it unnecessary to even have it in there, which I get you have to have a story of some kind or whatever. Uh, but I will say I do appreciate that feature. It is like kind of nice to just, at any, like I said, at any moment, just to have your inventory or whatever going. Um, but again, the, the, the armor and all that stuff doesn't really matter all that much. And most of that stuff too is like, you know, it's all random rolls and it'll be like, you know, five or 10% increased damage or whatever. And then, or percent damage to like a weak attack or, you know, whatever the, that case may be. So it's like, again, most of that stuff is all super trivial and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot better game in there. I just don't think it's going to be maybe Godfall two, or maybe if they update this one or if they even make a second one, I, I don't know if they will. Um, I, I, I think they are sort of leaning heavily on the fact that it's a launch title on two consoles that don't have a lot going for them at the moment. Um, and so that was probably what they're banking on. Um, I would say if you were to find this game at uh, like around 25 to maybe 30, you might find some fun in there. Yeah. Uh, I would That's say at what 20, I'm it's pretty good, but anything above that I think is a bad deal. 
especially because there's no guarantee of free updates either. I think it's all going to be DLC from the looks of it, uh, which is going to be an additional cost on top of that. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, I wish there was a better game in there because <clears throat> it does check a lot of boxes for stuff I would like. Um, again, a lot of people comparing it to Monster Hunter. I don't quite understand that one either. I think maybe just because the world is sort of one zone that you're going back into over and over again, maybe. And there's kind of uh, bigger enemies of that caliber at times, but not really, I don't know, anything. I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's just a frustrating experience, I think, overall. Uh, oh. But I, I intend to finish it because I've been compelled to play more of it. Um, I've also played it with the, the, the DualSense controller to try and... I don't know, I guess, symbolize what a next-gen experience may be like at the moment, uh, though the Rumble stuff is all out of there because it's on Epic, so it's like having to run through Steam's... Uh, uh, Steam's. Um, I have to run the launcher through Steam and then do all that, so it's like a little hit or miss on there, but... Yeah, I don't know. Could be a better game. Um, I guess the only other thing, too, is I'll quickly say I did play Super Mario Party. We played uh, a round of, of that... Um, that's it's Mario a, it's Party. A, it's a little weird. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't... I, it's the first one I played since the 64 one, so I'm, like, really detached from Mario Party. I haven't played one in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, it is... <laughs> this one's really weird because it's, like, it keeps throwing this, like, sticker thing at you continually. Like, it's like, hey, you should make a sticker uh, uh, postcard thing. You should do the sticker thing. Have you tried the stickers out? And, like, every character you talk to is like, you can get some stickers to do this. I'm like, what is this thing that is not needed at all <laughs> and then uh and you're unlocking points too and i don't know what maybe those unlock something grander later on um but at at the offset it's like it gives you this data pad that you've been collecting points when you play like the traditional mario party thing um and you can unlock advice with it like you can buy advice from the thing that shows you Basically, you can you can spend currency to get the tutorial of the game, which is excellent. Really weird, I love that. Um, which is really really strange. Um, and then I also think their decision to make this only use the Joy Cons pretty shitty. Like I yeah. I, uh, I I think it's like I I definitely had fun with it. We both had fun with it, but uh, yeah, that that like. Because it's like everything you're doing is like, okay, now hold the controller this way. All right, now flip it back around. Okay, now do this to do the high five. Now flip it back around again. Okay, now do it this way. Now hold it flat like this. Now do it. And you're like, damn, dude, just this thing already sucks to like grip onto. Don't do all this other trivial shit. And um, I don't know. Have you played the rhythm game that's in there? I have. Like not no. the not the mini game, but there is a There's like a whole of, separate mode. Yeah. Yes. I, I have not. It's fucking terrible it's <laughs> abysmal my dude like it yeah. doesn't even like one i don't know if you know about playing rhythm games but you really need either precision out of some kind of peripheral and no doing it all on motion controls is not the way that that happens uh yeah. so you can't you can't play it at all with like the d-pad or directional sticks or buttons or anything it's all like there's one where you have to hold up this marching bag like things so you have to do that in time um and it could be a little bit by virtue of the switch being like the tv is here but my switch is directly in front of me and we were on the ground so maybe there was some like weird interference there maybe but i don't think that that was it um it just uh it just sucked and it wasn't really fun and you have to do like you have to do like three rounds of like five of them to unlock whatever the gym is. Cause there's also like five gyms or some shit to unlock in this game or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then we did the river raft mode, which is like where you're all rowing a boat and then doing mini games, uh, which was fun enough. Like that was okay. But the, the mini games did recycle a couple times, which is like a little whatever and it seems like you have to do that a few times also to unlock the gym and there's i guess something happens when you get all the gyms from all the mini game sections of stuff but yeah i don't know um and then there's something from unlocking all the mini games but that seems really weird too because i think they're all random like it doesn't mean you're gonna get a new one so that could never happen potentially 
depending upon how those are doled out. Um, and then you get into the actual, like, dice block stuff, which is fine, but then this companion thing is, like, super rigged, so if you've, like, landed, like, she landed on two companions, um, so it got, like, an extra minimum, like, four spots every roll anyway, so that was pretty wild, um, but not necessarily a bad addition, but the boards are also kind of, kind of boring compared to what I remember as well, they're, like, kind of small. and there's only, like, four of them. Yeah, and which I thought was strange. There's like three, and then you unlock another one, but I don't know how you get the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, the and, other thing uh, that's weird about that game is that the online is just the mini games. Like you can't do like board game online, which is weird. Um, yeah, I was gonna say because I was like, maybe we could, you know, um, you know, me, you, and our partners could maybe. I was thinking of like queuing up to do that, but if that's the case, that's a bummer because I thought it would yeah. just be like playing Mario Party online or whatever. <laughs> It's just mini games. I, I, I thought it was weird that there was even an online component to it at all. I was like, what is the online portion of this game? And now that I hear that, then I really have no idea. Because that's Well, that's really why everybody strange. was excited about this one. Because they were like, oh, they'll update it with like new characters and new stages. And like, oh, it has an online component. And they've done like jack fucking shit with it. So. Yeah, it doesn't. It's. it's yeah, because new stages would definitely help. Uh. Uh, yeah, it's weird because it does seem like the one core franchise they've had that they have not expanded for the Switch like they've done everything else. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it actually seems like they took it a few far steps backwards, whereas, like, you know, Zelda became this huge open-ended thing, Pokemon became this huge wide-open world, Odyssey was huge and open. Um, all of their core franchises they put out so far on that have been like a ma- supremely expanded version of what they've had before. And this one just, uh, yeah, seems pretty lackluster. Kind of like Mario Tennis too. That one also seemed like pretty, pretty, you know, I dig that game a lot though. I love playing that game online. I, I, I think oh, Mario Tennis enough. Asus is a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, everybody loves winning against four year olds, man. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a good time. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I didn't, didn't touch that part of it, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's still too, I think too expensive, but we had some fun with it. Um, yeah, as always, I mean, it's going to be $60. People, sure. It's going to be $60 10 years from now. So well, I paid, I think I, I got it for 40. So it wasn't like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Too yeah, bad. Was, I still think 20 that was one of like seems better. That was like one of four games they had on sale, like first yes. party games. Yeah. 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 And I had like twenty some credit in there already, so I was like, oh, I'll spend the twenty and just grab this. And then we and then we spent two dollars on the first overcooked and ended up playing a lot more of that. That game gets fucking it's a good really game. hard, by the way. It's good. Like, I don't Still, know if you yeah. played that. It's that pretty first fucked. It's pretty rough. Uh yeah, we, we we were doing a lot of that. So that one those are both pretty good. But that's my that's my games for this week, which is more than I thought. So, hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I guess just for time's sake, I'll just touch on this stuff real quick. Um, sure. I played some Nvidia GeForce Now, which is their like streaming offering. Uh, because mm-hmm. if you look at our notes, it's just like generic game streaming stuff. I've been yeah. experimenting more and more with this stuff. Um. And GeForce Now seems like the best of the offerings technically so far. So the thing I like about it is that, like, you pull in your library from different, like, services. Like, uh, like Uplay is a part of it. Um, Steam, of course. And so, like, you log into NVIDIA GeForce Now and essentially it's just, like, here's your games you already own. What you're paying us for is, like priority access to a PC in some server farm somewhere. Um, Cause I started playing with it and it's like, Oh, wait 15 minutes for your rig or wait 20 minutes, depending on the game that you're trying to play. And just to like, try it out. I was like, okay, I'll pay this five bucks for a, for a month um, and see what it's about. And yeah, man, like it, it's cause I've been playing with the razor Kishi on the phone and like, it's actually very responsive compared to some of the other services on mm-hmm. my like not so good internet. Um, but I was also able to play it at work today, uh, using data, just testing it out versus X cloud. And I feel like it's, it's a lot more responsive in that respect. Also like having a good chunk of your library, like on the go is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. 
and I think we talked about this way back when we started the podcast, but NVIDIA kind of got in hot water because they were adding, uh, like, basically every game you own to the service. And right. some publishers were like, nah, we don't want our game on the service. And I imagine that's a lot to do with um, with them, like, getting exclusive deals with, like, some of these streaming services out there. I like have game to Pass imagine, and yeah. So... Whenever I so I have almost like 600 games on Steam, and whenever I add my Steam library, only 150 are accessible. Uh, so there's oh, a geez. big okay, yeah, there's a big chunk there that's just not in it. Um, but yeah, like out of all of them, I've had the most luck and success, like actually playing a game. Uh, now, I actually, pl- uh, go ahead. My only que- I guess my question is, do- is it utilizing your Steam like saves and everything too? Yes, yes. So oh, what cool. it does, there, what see, it does is one. it, it takes you to like a virtual desktop environment where it just launches Steam Big Picture, um, uh-huh. and the game is already installed. So in some cases you'll get in there and it runs like a first time setup, uh, but normally like it just goes right to the game. And yeah, like you'll you'll get the like prompts that it's like downloading your saves and stuff. So same thing with like Ubisoft Connect, like all that's integrated. So I was able to pick up and play Assassin's Creed Valhalla for a couple hours just on my phone with that controller, and it felt pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like I picked up Below as well. Like that's another game I was going to talk about real quick, but I picked up Below, and that wasn't a part of the streaming. Uh, through right. NVIDIA, even that's my in my Steam library, which is a little disappointing because I kind of bought that game with the intention of like maybe playing it on the go. Sure. Um, but yeah, is there out a, of all is of there them, a, I've had a good time with it. Is there a stark list anywhere that, that outlines what is available? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, there might be. Because uh, that's kind I of think- a weird sell then if you're like, hey, you can pay us five a month to maybe play the games you own, maybe not. Um, I would almost have to assume they have to have a list somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm checking. Yeah, yeah. They actually have a... If you're interested... I mean, I'll pull it up here briefly. Yeah. I'm yeah, just curious. There's a, cause... there's a bunch of games available on it. Um, yeah, you can see this giant list here. So, I don't really own everything on Steam, but I do have a good chunk of games. And it was a little surprising to see that only 140 or, some, or, 40 or so of them made it over. Um, I'd be curious, yeah, because I have like, uh, I think I've reached 1,600 games on Steam or something. Ridiculous. Jesus Christ, oh. bud. Jesus Christ. Bud. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the bundle game for a long time, so I mean, yeah. it, that's that's a lot of it. Um but I also, I think I'm at 11 years of service or something like that. So, I mean, it's not, you know, it's still not, it's a lot. It's still a lot. There's no way around the amount, but. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 1,434 and then 630 DLCs. So I'm, I own more DLCs than you do games. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty <laughs> fucked. That's pretty fucked. <laughs> it's a little extreme. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, here's the thing. Uh, I like video games. Hey, so, video games. <laughs> it's, like a lu- it's a games. lucrative business, they say. Yeah. Um, well, there's also a long time too. I'll say where like uh, anytime I would get gift cards or anything, I always turn them into Steam gift cards of some capacity as well. So there's mm-hmm. I've tried to mitigate the cost a lot of stuff. But it's not always like straight just purchasing full price stuff. Same. A lot of my stuff's like from bundles and like publisher yeah. deals and stuff. Like I'll buy a whole bundle of games from like Square Enix was the most recent one I bought because mm-hmm. it was fairly cheap. Uh, but yeah, I've been on the hum- humble count. horn for God damn. I think since they began, I think that's been like the, yeah, I mean, it's a shame too. Cause they're kind of going downhill every month a little bit. This last one wasn't that bad, but they've been, uh, they're not near as quality as they used to be. Yeah. Uh, for so sure. That's a bit of a shame, but also kind of freaked them. Cause they were offering like a hundred dollars for a full year of their highest tier service, humble thing. But only if you're a new subscriber and you're like, Hey man, been on this been on this racket for a while you can't throw me a fucking bone can you throw a poppy a bone i'm really yeah. getting tired of companies like not supporting anyone that has been supporting them for a long time seems to be like a cool trend with a lot of companies where they're just like yeah we really like to get some new people here we've had you guys for a while and you guys are okay and you've definitely helped us through the years but i don't really want to give you any if, kind of anything 
fuck them really like actually like speaking it. of that the most recent one oculus because they were like a, less than a month after the quest 2 came out they're like hey if you buy an oculus quest 2 this month or uh it, or if you starting now to whenever if you've bought an oculus quest 2 you get asgard's wrath for free so less than a month after the quest 2 launched they're giving away like the most acclaimed game on their system but if you already bought it and you had like like the lens issues like I had, or you had the elite strap break, or you had all this other stuff, fuck you. And I'm like, dude, you know what? Like, you guys already kind of run a shitty racket, and then you just double down on it where you're just like, let's get some more people in here. If you already bought it, that's too bad. If you already beta tested our hardware, that sucks. But everybody else, you get a free thing, and you're just like, man, guys, that's really cool of you. I mean, they're, yeah. I'll be honest, like, the Oculus forums have not been, like, overwhelmingly thrilled with their them as a company. It's been pretty universally upset with the stuff they keep doing. Mm-hmm. Um so but that's an argument for another time how was uh below uh have you played it at all no i almost i almost picked it up when i saw it because i've looked at it for a while but i i just i don't know so, I, I picked up ring of pain instead and i feel like i made a my I made a good choice there yeah it's okay um like i remember when it came out a year ago like reception on it was kind of like lukewarm because it yeah. w- what it's trying to be is like a Dark Souls style like exploration kind of high risk high reward uh, kind of game, right. but it also has like an element of survival on top of it that didn't jive well with a lot of people. So like in oh, the game okay. you'll like come across like materials and like you'll craft torches and you'll craft arrows. There's no like recipe book, so you have to remember what the things you're combining are to like make them in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, they released a mode called explore mode, which gets rid of all that. Essentially explore mode, like gets rid of the hunger and thirst meters and replaces it with an overall like health meter, uh, where if like you run into a trap, you don't instantly die. You just kind of take bleed damage until you can use a bandage on yourself or you just eat enough food and, and you can kind of mitigate it. Um, the other big thing is that like you have a currency in the game uh which is like the shards and the shards you use to like turn campfires into teleportation points in right. the sur- in the survival mode of the game if you turn something into a teleportation point you can teleport there like straight away but only once for that playthrough so imagine okay. like you die right after a campfire you turn that into a teleporter you die you teleport to that campfire run to your body to collect all the loot and you die immediately you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the game and your only your only course of getting back there faster is by using these environmental shortcuts that are in the game um i mean the moment to moment stuff is pretty cool like this is kind of what you're looking at for most of the game right here is like uh i actually have can't see your uh, screen that you're sharing so i'm not Oh, sure what it well, looks like. uh, well, I, yeah, I've been, I've been like, I kind of have an idea of what the game looks like anyway, so that's mm-hmm. okay. As well, so what's on here, screen, see. yeah, they can see it. So what's on screen is like you have like the the floor of the cavern is surrounded by fog, uh, and you have a lantern that you use that has like a, you burn the currency as you use it. So it's like this risk reward of like using torches but burning them out, or using the lantern and burning your currency. Uh, to kind of see better in these dark caverns. Uh, and this is where you can, like, run into, like, traps and a bunch of stuff like that. Um, so it's it's a cool game. It's pretty decent, but I think the explore mode stuff did a better job of, like, conveying the, uh, like, the world. And it, it gets mm-hmm. rid of the frustrations of, like, having to constantly go back after death. Um, reading a lot about the game, people like the explore mode because it fixes pretty much every criticism people had about the original survival mode. Um, sure, so yeah. I'll, en- I'll end up playing a little bit more of it. I haven't played way too much, but I- I'm kind of digging what's there. Um, I can see it getting repetitive, but you know we'll see. Yeah. Well, how is the uh, how is the combat, or is there any? It's very it's very simple. So. Okay. You have like these you have these little red creatures on the map. I'll try to get to a point in the video real quick where it shows a little bit of combat for the people watching. Um but yeah, you have like in the dark caverns you'll see like red lights. 
mm -hmm. those are kind of indicating like enemies in the area and so you'll run up like yeah here's one right here you just kind of like whack your sword at him you have a bow and arrow as well um but really it, it's a very rudimentary it, you have like some kind of combos like if you're holding your shield and you attack you do a stab if you dodge oh, okay. and attack you do like another like evasive stab so there's a couple like combos and things like that but for the most part it's very uh it's very straightforward um huh. okay yeah, so, it always yeah. seemed neat because I remember when it was first announced, I had a like one that I wanted to follow up with and check out. But yeah, kept when it came out, it seemed like it came out to pretty mixed reception already. Yeah. Um, and which so is, uh, kind of a shame because Coffee Bar has made some pretty decent stuff overall. So. Mm -hmm. That's really Actually, all I, I got. I mean, I played some uh, Hunt Showdown, but I, I think I want to play a little bit more of that before I formulate an opinion. I kind of want to play a little bit with you uh, this I weekend, would like if to, yeah. possible. I've played a good bit of that game, but I've only played solo mostly in it. And uh, at first, there was no solo mode. I think they've uh, changed that around a little bit. It is a game I wish had more of a of a solo or co-op experience without the battle royale aspect of it because I really like how eerie and weird the world is set up and uh, mm -hmm. I think some missions like that would be pretty rad. Uh, yeah, because my biggest frustration again with playing it solo is like you still get queued in with groups of like three um, that are teams, so it's like if you come up with one of those, you're pretty much fucked just by the way the reload system works and all that, but. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm down to do that anytime this yeah. week because I would like to I would like to actually play that game proper because I've owned it since it was, it was the first early the day it came out I guess basically because it was like twenty bucks or whatever when it first came out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd like to play some more of that game. Yeah, let's try it out. We'll talk about it some next week. Night. Uh, let All me right. click. I'll click this link because I still can't see that. Yeah, so yeah, talk yeah. About some some stuff. Aww. Let's so see. yeah, there's a couple really good games on this list that I skimmed earlier. Um, yeah, you talking you talking about uh, you talking about Gotcha Force for the GameCube? Yeah, of course. How'd you know? That I was knew. the one. What'd you look at that? Um, Fantasy Star Portable Two. I don't know how it is. Every week we mention a game, uh, some version of that game is on this list. Super Smash Brothers Melee, right there, baby. Yeah, that's really fucking weird. Yeah, Jack and uh, Daxter. I love Jack and Daxter, man. I liked all of those so much. That that first game is like totally different than the other ones, but it I like it a lot. I like that. I liked I all really of them. Yeah. That first game. That first game was great. I liked what they were doing with the other two. Like they were at least trying to make it a little more all over the place. And the second one, they tried to. I mean, it, people compared it to Grand Theft Auto, which is definitely not the comparison to make to that. But it was like kind of neat that you could steal cars and do all that other stuff. Uh, and then he had like speeder bikes and some other shit. Man, Jack and Daxter was it's pretty good. And then they had to go on and just start making garbage like The Last of Us, you know, and stuff that no one likes. You know? <laughs> yeah, and absolutely nobody likes those games. Yeah, they went from there. Um, they went from all the good stuff like Crash Bandicoot and made freaking garbage like that. No, no, yeah, not. I, I mean, realistically, Naughty Dog has like a pretty unmarred history of games. Like, basically, most everything they've made has been good for whatever they were trying to do. Mm hmm. Um, Link Link to the Past and Four Swords, pretty good. I never played GBA. like the four, I never played the Four Swords stuff because I didn't know enough people with Game Cubes and Game Boy Advances and Link you, cables. They, when it when they put it out on the eShop, I think they added a mode where you could play with a bot kind of thing, or you could switch between it, and it was okay. It's not yeah. the intended way to play it, but it was you know it was playable, more playable than it was before. Mm hmm. Uh, Shadows of the Empire, that Star Wars game, was pretty good. It was a first-person... Or I think it was the Shadows of the Empire. Shadows or maybe of the Empire was, was a third-person game. Okay, then I'm thinking of Dark something. It was on the PS1. Dark Forces. Yeah, and that was a first-person shooter in like a Doom-style game. That was like one of the first games I had. I don't know where it came from, but I had that game for some reason. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good series. Dark Forces is really good. That turned into Jedi Knight and those games afterward. Oh, right. Uh, uh, did you ever play Let It Die? 
It's it's another. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a pseudo game. I heard of it. I've heard of this. Uh, game. I think it's great. I think it's it's either pseudo or what's his face. Oh, it's a pseudo uh, fifty one. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty weird. I liked it, but it's definitely like, it's a really strange game. Like you you have like. A team of characters that are like characters that you've made, but you can send them into other people's worlds. But it's like this weird, almost Dark Soulsy combat system. It's a free but you to have play like, game. Yeah, it's really interesting. It was initially only on the PlayStation Four, and it was like one of the few things I played a shit ton of on the PlayStation Four. It's really weird, and it's super hard, and I'm not really sure like how you overcome what it's putting in front of you. Um, it's also like a service game too, so it's a live service setup. It's really strange. It's a, I mean, obviously coming from him, it's going to be, but it's even really weird at what it's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. And then, um, man, I can't believe the Master Chief Collection came out a year ago because it's still coming out <laughs> every couple it's months. Still rolling. They put out like what three or four of those this year, like. They actually put out, like, every single one of them this year. Like, pretty yeah, much, except say, for Halo PC. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, this was December 3rd. Yeah, so December of last year was Halo Reach, right? It wasn't even the first it one. Was Halo, yeah, it was Halo Reach. So then yeah. they put out 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? Was 4 the most recent one they just put out? Yeah, they just put out Damn, four. dude. Four Halo games in one year? And you still can't put out Halo Infinite on your new console? Damn, dog, that's crazy. It's pretty, fu it's pretty um, fucked up. Well, they're like, we already put four Halo games on here. What more do you want? More Halo? God damn, a new one? <laughs> all right, we're putting a, we're putting a grappling hook in this one. Fuck it. All right, Whatever. You, yeah, he's like, all right, you know what's taking a long time? Open world, free roam, FPS, and you get a grappling hook. I'm like, oh shit, okay, all right, I guess we'll wait. You get to be <laughs> the Halo this time. Holy uh, shit! Could you imagine? I can't believe we skirted over Banjo Kazooie for the Xbox 360. What the fuck's going on, dog? That's uh, that's that's just a arcade release of that game. Uh, it's uh, still a release of Banjo it's still Kazooie. A it's, it's still a good game. Still a good game. It's still a good game, my man. Even though I haven't played it in a long ass time, so I couldn't really tell you. Yeah, that uh, Xbox port's pretty good. It's the one that they have in the rare replay, and yeah, it looks and plays pretty good. Cleaned up all okay. the visuals and the text and stuff, so. I just I need to ask the big questions. Where's Nuts and Bolts two at? You know what I mean. Uh, that's coming after like Sea of Thieves and Everwild or whatever that new game is that they're making. Oh, I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like to play that. I don't know what that game is supposed to be though. I have it no looks, idea what that game is supposed to be. It looks really it cool. It looks pretty though, cool. What is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a action RPG third person set in a mysterious world where you mm -hmm. have lost your memory. Uh, but the but a unknown force guides you through what happens to be either the end of the world or otherwise. Uh, but outside of that, it looks cool, man. It looks very cool. I like yeah. I like the art style a lot, and the the creature designs look really rad so far. Um, I do want to check out that Pathless game though. Speaking of games that have came out, because I thought that game was initially only a side scrolling game, but it seems like there's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bug Snacks, I would like to play because apparently that game's fucking bananas and not anywhere near what you think it is. Yeah, uh, I want to get into that one too. I might end up picking it up before the holidays. I think he. I think he was. I think when Epic has a sale this month, uh, this Christmas, it'll probably be relatively cheap because I think you could get a pre-launch for like twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I've heard that game goes some places you really would not expect for what you're looking at, and I want to know. I'm curious yeah. to know but yeah guys hopefully by next week um you know what actually i saw the last thing on the stadia forums people already preloading uh, cyberpunk over on stadia i know man they're gonna be playing it the minute it comes out i don't know how that p makes any sense what are they preloading it on they're probably just buying it and there's like a button on it that just says unlocks in and then they're just like hitting A over and over and over again like until it happens. I, hey, I saw a bar filling up and it, <laughs> and it was showing like a download. I wonder if, have you checked uh, on your Steam to see if that preloads up just out of curiosity? You looked today? Uh, no, I have not. 
No. Just curious, because uh, I think maybe the console ones, maybe it was a, maybe they were looking at a PS5, and uh, just saying <laughs> something about Stadia it. on the forums. <laughs> you know what? I could, I could look it up. Well, they're, look, they're on their Macintosh PC playing Stadia in a Chrome browser with a, uh, with a Hotos. You know, as everyone yeah. does with Stadia, just do whatever you feel like. Whatever works. You, you mean? Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, the game weight. Uh, go 80, 80 gig install plus 56 day one patch for consoles with Stadia we can play instantly. That's the okay, that's the, the argument that they're saying is even though I bought a PlayStation 5, if I would have bought Cyberpunk on Stadia, I could play it played the minute it came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What an argument. But I guess that what that means is there is preload uh happening on the the ps5 side of stuff so looks like it's gotta uh, come PC to see hopefully we'll we'll get something yeah um fuck stadium man that's all i'm saying i'm tired of this i was tired of talking <laughs> about goddamn streaming <laughs> services every week man i need some real news actually again next week we'll have finally the hit so we'll have something to discuss absolutely um I think I I think I'll as far as going forward I should have a review of Ring of Pain coming up probably tomorrow uh cuz I I want that to people to play that game. It's a really good game. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm I'm tempted to check out this uh Project Wingman which is a humble uh looks like in in the vein of Ace Combat, sort of uh, shooter that has a roguelike proponent to it for a flight, Ace Combat thing seems fun. Mm-hmm. Um, or Nickelodeon Kart Racers too. I'm there. I'm there. I'm buying it right now. It's only sixteen ninety nine, dog. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, that one's it. not too bad. Uh, right the only now. thing I've heard about this Nickelodeon game and the first one, it doesn't have any voiceovers. So it has every Nickelodeon character with none of their personality. It's really strange. <laughs> but I heard the racing's all right. So, you know, and we're desperate as fuck for a kart racer on this side of the world. So maybe it's maybe it's worth checking out. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but Wingman seems really odd. rad. So I'm going to probably give it a run. But yeah. yeah, one of the weirdest things I, I when I read that, I was like, are you serious? Like, how do you make a how do you make a licensed game with all these licensed characters and then don't have any dialogue? Just fucking rip them out of the show. You got the license. They didn't give you the voices. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> they don't have a kit that just sends over voice lines and go, yeah, you just use this. Yeah, it's, it's the character saying, hey, it's SpongeBob <laughs> fucking sucking his own dick out loud. Like, just put that in the game. Who cares, dude? <laughs> It's fucking putting Squidward's nose in his mouth and sucking old Patrick's banana, dude. Just put it in. Yeah. It's the fairly odd parents cussing the one time they do it. Like, yeah. come on. Calling Timmy it's Turner, cat dog making a fart sound with his mouth. Just put anything in there. It's like as long as it's close, just just you can't have these characters without some sound effects. That's crazy. Yeah. Like that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. But hey, it's only sixteen bucks. Actually, speaking of that, I, this is really this is I'm, I'm I'm making this run way longer than it needs to, and I apologize. But I was just looking at the the top seller or the upcoming list. There's a game called Fogs, which looks like Cat Dog, but if both sides were a dog, and you play as like a long dog noodle. And there's a demo, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna download that right now. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I saw Cat Dog as soon as I said it. Whatever this thing was came up. So this does look cute. It looks all right, man. It could it kind of looks like Nobby Nobby Boy. I don't know what it is though, but well, you know, I'll give it a run for its free no money. I'll give it yeah, try I'll that play out it for no money. Let me know how it I'll is. Check out Wingman and and pick up my damn pre order for Cyberpunk so I uh, stop spending money on crap. That all is right, Cyberpunk. Anywho. Yeah, boys. All right. Well, everyone, thanks again for watching. If you. Uh, if you want to look for Christian anywhere, it's the Daily Robot all over the place. Uh, if you're looking for me, you've already found it. Uh, where you can check out art on Weekling Art on Instagram. Uh, other than that, though, that's fucking that's video games. Piss off and pee off, everybody. Pee <laughs> off, you guys. <laughs> See you Good. next week. 
Get some green and tea off on the course, buds. Thank <laughs> you.